Ever since 1762, people have gathered on the feast day of St. Patrick to celebrate their homeland, their heritage, their identity, and their character. Today, more than 150,000 men and women will proudly march up Fifth Avenue to honor the patron saint of Ireland, St. Patrick, a man who dedicated his life to the service of others. So, follow the green line up Fifth Avenue. It's the 2023 St. Patrick's Day Parade. New York City and St. Patrick's Day. Can you think of two things that go better together? We've been gathering this way since 1762. That's 14 years before the ink dried on the Declaration of Independence. Originally, this was a chance for homesick Irish to gather and celebrate, but today certainly no one will feel lonely. Two million people expected here in person and many more able to watch at home and away here on NBC, our website, NBCNewYork.com, and wherever you stream programming these days. All sorts of new ways to take part in a beloved tradition. It is great to see you once again. Happy St. Patrick's Day from Fifth Avenue. I'm Gus Rosendill, joined once again by Tommy and Tressa. Happy St. Patrick's Day to the both of you. Tressa, great to see you. How are you feeling on this day? I am feeling absolutely fantastic. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I am delighted to be back here with you all today, celebrating the patron saint of New York and the patron saint of Ireland. Today, is the theme of this year's St. Patrick's Day Parade is food insecurities. And it's also the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement. Our Grand Marshal today is Kevin Conway. Kevin, he is doing something unique this year. What he's going to do is he's going to share his shillelagh with each of his 17 aides. That's going to be 18 Grand Marshals marching up Fifth Avenue today because each one of them with the shillelagh is going to lead the parade. What a unique situation. What a first cause. What a unbelievable. Today is going to be a wonderful, wonderful day. It's going to be full of stories, songs, and a lot of fun. And we're going to be here with you to tell you all about it. We're going to have so much today. What we don't have is an overcoat on Tommy because the weather is absolutely outstanding here. Tommy, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling fine today, Dust. And you know, everybody asks me, is there an American dream? I always say, yeah, there's an American dream. Just look at me. I mean, a lad, I came from Knockbridge in County Loud, and I remember being sent out into the field behind our house where I would pick the shamrocks and we'd go into Warworths and Dundalk by the little box, and the shamrocks would be put in the box, and there'd be mail from my uncles and aunts who marched in this parade. Mm -hmm. So here I have, I have the best seat in the house. I mean, have I come a long way? You can <laughs> say I've come a long way besides the 3,000 mile, of course, but I have come a long way, and this is a day that you relish. The weather is fantastic. Is, yeah. There's going to be a... I mean, we just say, there's going to be a million here. Uh, absolutely. Easily. Oh, easily. <laughs> easily that. Easy. So we're here easily. at 63rd Street and 5th Avenue, and this is going to be our vantage point for the next couple of hours. Of course, a lot of the action starts over at Midtown, outside St. Patrick's Cathedral, and that's where our friend and colleague, Rana Novini, is standing by. Rana, happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Kind of set the scene for us there. Yeah, good morning, Gus, Tommy, and Tracy. A uh, happy uh, St. Patrick's Day to all of you. I'm here outside of St. Patrick's Cathedral, where I believe Mass just ended. I see people walking out, and we will hear from Cardinal Dolan momentarily, but I want to show you first the crowds that have gathered here along Fifth Avenue near St. Patrick's Cathedral. You can see some of these people who have been here expecting two million spectators. Many of these people have been out here since early this morning, and I'm seeing more people arriving uh, right now. Uh, in just moments, we will see about 150,000 participants of this parade, the oldest and largest St. Patrick's Day parade uh, in the world. They're going to march up Fifth Avenue here, passing where you are, Gus, uh, in, in a few moments as well. It's going to be a great day, a great parade, and as you mentioned, the weather, you really couldn't ask for a better day. We'll send it back to you. It is absolutely picture perfect, Rand, and we'll see you in a few as Maslitz out there. I know you'll be talking to the Cardinal in a little bit for his message for today, so we'll see you then. Thanks very much, Rana. Now, along with all the action from the parade, here today. We're also going to be taking some snapshots of uh, the situation in Ireland, including this, the St. Patrick's Center in County Down, the only permanent exhibition dedicated to the patron saint of Ireland. St. Patrick, let's take a look at that now. We're here in St. Patrick's country, right beside St. Patrick's grave, where he died on the 17th of March in Down Patrick. We're at the St. Patrick Center, which is the only permanent exhibition in the world about Ireland's patron saint. 
St. Patrick's Centre has gone through a metamorphosis since COVID and we have completely reimagined the St. Patrick's Centre. Not only do we tell St. Patrick's story, but we've got a new IMAX presentation which flies you to all of the different parts of Ireland associated with St. Patrick. And we celebrate now for the first time how St. Patrick is celebrated by millions of people all over the world. We started during the lockdown because of COVID to walk around down Patrick and we saw like the amazing places that are associated with Patrick that we didn't even really comprehend ourselves. So we developed a passport and it's a 28 kilometer Camino, which links seven holy sites, including the grave and also the landing site. Most people can't do 28K in one day. It's a bit of a challenge. You can do various sections, but my favorite route is the coast. We walked from Ballyhorn and Beach along the coast to a place where St. Patrick had a well and he baptized. And we go for lunch at the golf course. It's pretty amazing. This is a place where you come on a genuine pilgrimage and it's a reboot for your soul. If you want an adventure, if you want a reboot for your spirit, and you want to know the real Patrick, and you want a taste of real freedom, and you want to come to know yourself at a deeper level, and to know the true God, you can come here with no faith, you can go home with no faith, everyone is welcome. But I think if you really want a new path in life and you want to see life from a different perspective, come on St. Patrick's Way. Be refreshed and be amazed. The St. Patrick Centre is here to encourage people to know more about St. Patrick. We celebrate St. Patrick's Day on the 17th of March. But how much do we actually know about St. Patrick? St. Patrick is part of the Living Church, but he's also celebrated all over the world. And for those people who celebrate, we want them to understand more about St. Patrick and how you can continue to bring people together. We want you, when you come to Ireland, to be able to come just two hours north of Dublin and find out all about him on St. Patrick's Way and in the St. Patrick Centre. Visit St. Patrick, how can you come to Ireland and not find out about the patron saint? What a destination. And we have a very special very special group coming up to you now. They're from County Tyrone, there's seven of them in it, and they all play different instruments. They call them a Kenneth clan, and you are going to enjoy this. They have deep uh, national traditions stretching across four generations of music in the true area of North Monaghan. I present the McKennet clan.
seven siblings in perfect harmony there. Tommy, I hope you don't mind. I'm tempted to ask Tressa to dance after hearing that music. That <laughs> no problem, no problem. I'd be watching. She don't have to worry about it. There was always music in the, in the McKenna house, that's for sure. I Absolutely. mean, how do you have all those practice? Wouldn't be much sleep, will there? Oh, I, they'll have an orchestra before you know it. <laughs> and we'll have more of the 2023 New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade right after this. And we're back with you for the 2023 New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade. It is Friday, March 17th, here in New York City as we gaze up the green line that will bring thousands of marchers up Fifth Avenue to our vantage point here at 63rd and 5th. Two million people expect to be looking at this in person. Tressa. They certainly will, and that uh, green line we were just looking at was established through the generosity of John Fitzsimmons and Kevin Nelson in memory of the late Neil Walsh of New the New York St. Patrick's Day Parade. Tommy, there have been some years where it's been almost impossible to see the green line because of the weather. Uh, you've done this parade many, many times. Uh, this weather is pretty outstanding. Yeah, it is outstanding. And I mean, uh, there has been a few guys who haven't been able to see the green line, and there's nothing to do with the weather. But there's, there's been a few of them, too. So, you know, you gotta you got to go with the flow. But it's the ideal day for a St. Patrick's Day parade. I mean, yes. and plus, you know, all the COVID seems to have cleared up, and people are just looking. Like uh, the Grand Marshals dance out in Anton's a couple of weeks ago through 700 people. People. people want to get out of the house now. People want to meet their friends. And that's what St. Patrick's Day Parade is all about. Mm -hmm. Meeting your buddies. Sometimes they don't meet for a year, but they do meet on St. Patrick's Day. And there's so many volunteers that make all of this happen and bring this uh, event together. And there are a lot of events leading up to the parade itself. This is a real uh, season of celebration. Yeah, we were at the gala the other night. And keep in mind, folks, when you're watching the parade, everybody, everybody on the parade is a volunteer. And that's why the parade goes so well because they're all volunteering their time. So we're here at the viewing stand at 63rd and 5th. Rana Navini is outside St. Patrick's Cathedral and she is joined with the Cardinal as well. Rana. Yes, good morning. I'm here with Cardinal Dolan. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks Happy St. Patrick's Day. Tell me, what was your message at Mass this morning? Well, I, I didn't give the message. We had a great preacher who's in charge. It was appropriate, uh, Grana, because he's in charge of the missions of the United States to help 
the church in the mission land, Zipporah land. And he reminded us, let's not forget, St. Patrick was a missionary. He was an apostle. He was an evangelist. He brought the faith to Ireland. Ireland was pagan. And he brought the faith to people who had enslaved them. Okay, all right, looks like we lost our signal down in the cathedral. We'll try to uh, get that fixed and uh, rejoin Rana in just a little bit. But one of the things that we're going to talk about today is all the ways sort of the images of the day are captured. You'll see a lot of photographers out there today, and that includes photographer and video videographer Ross O'Callaghan. He's undertaken a tremendous project documenting the many faces of people in Ireland assigned the name Patrick at birth. So that's the one thing that all these people have in common. It's quite, quite interesting. The project is called Patty Irishman. Let's take a look at that. The Paddy Irishman Project is a suite of photographs of Paddies who are Irishmen from all walks of life, all different age brackets, and documenting real life stories of Paddies in Ireland. I've chosen a photographic project because I'm a director of photography normally and I work in film and TV and documentaries and all, so I've always wanted to try and break out of my comfort zone. There is a variety of paddies. Ireland is full of paddies, and that's the great thing. It wasn't difficult to find them. As soon as we launched this two years ago, when we put the call out for paddies, we were inundated. There was over 500 people within a week that had contacted us as paddies wanting to get involved in the project. There's thousands and thousands of paddies all over Ireland, and they all tell individual stories. The plan was always to launch the project in New York. Now we've 50 in the suite. They're the ones that are going to New York, and then hopefully I'll keep going, and interest will keep going, and let's see what happens. Pershing Square is an outdoor exhibition, very exciting. I think it's the first time an Irish artist has ever been exhibiting in Pershing Square. Anyone who doesn't know it, it's right in the shadow of Grand Central Station. And the plan is, is that we have 24 of our paddies exhibiting there, um, all on a big outdoor Durabond six by five frames. So the word is, is that all the traffic for the New York parade on Patrick's Day and all that comes through there. And I'm hoping that it's gonna get many views and a lot of interest. The plan is we have been given a space in the famous parade in New York this year and they'll all be marching behind our banner which is uh, proud to share the name of St. Patrick. I'm delighted in the interest in it. I'm delighted for all the Paddies who gave up their time for us to meet them and tell their stories and share the word that there's no such thing as a typical Paddy. Cardinal Dole and I apologize for the troubles we had. You were just telling me about the importance of it's people important. passing. We got a saint. Yeah. We got a saint. So this parade for three, we're going to the, we're into the third century, remains loyal to its the roots of faith and family and friendship and the church. It's a big day and they don't forget it, you know. And, and it's a it's a great sign of joy and I'm just so proud of it and I'm grateful for you being here. What do you think of this weather and the and this the of course I've been I practicing all year. I'm in sales, not management. Good it's a beautiful day. Oh, the, Grand Marshal, the Grand Marshal is joining us Kevin now. We have Conway. Kevin Conway. Good, Good to see you, Kevin. See you, we Kevin. spoke Kevin. last week Don't and ask yeah. him to sing. <laughs> Way to go, I can dance, but I can't sing. Mr. Oh, good to see Sean Lane is joining us now, chairman of the board of the parade. We're going to speak to you a little bit later, Sean. But uh, Mr. Conway, while you're here, I wanted to ask you about this theme of fighting hunger. I know that is so important to you, and you're doing something really special with the parade this year. Yes, it's important to all of us because it's it's across the whole world. It's throughout America, and it's right here in our backyard in New York. Two million people don't know where their next meal is coming from. Twenty-five percent of our kids. 500,000 kids in New York City. So we're trying to bring awareness to it and we're trying to raise money and make a dent in the problem. Granted, that's why the Irish came over. They were, my great grandfather came because he buried his parents in the family and then came to the United States. Now I'm not too credible in speaking, but I'm on the, the front lines of fight. Planning so. for the future. There you go. <laughs> it's a cause that's so important to everyone here in New York and of course those of Irish descent as well. Thank, thank you both. Thank you, thank you all for being here. We're going to send it back to you. Okay, Rana, we appreciate it. We will see you in a little bit there. And of course, Grand Marshal has quite the honor here. He, he leads the march. And how's it got going? Does he blows a whistle? Or? Yes, um, it gets going at 11 a.m. on the nose. Frank O'Connor had the honor this morning of yeah. blowing the whistle and he started the parade. He's a Fordham Prep graduate and he has five children and his wife, um, 
Dana is so proud of him today. And of course, he's a very good friend of Frank Comerford. Oh, there Past you go. Grand Marshal, there you go. And we know Mr. Comerford, an executive of NBC and a longtime uh, supporter yes. of the parade. Yes, man. Yes. Frank's a good guy. Yeah. And we'll have more of the New York City St. Patrick's Day parade right after this. And the parade is on the move here on NBC. This is the 2023 New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade. Some motorcycles making their way up Fifth Avenue. The parade itself around the 59th Street Park, just a few blocks from our vantage point here at 63rd and 5th. A more beautiful day you could not have ordered up for the march that will be broadcast here for the next couple of hours. Millions of spectators and thousands of people taking part in this beloved tradition. Tommy and Tressa, you can already start to feel the energy uh, pick up a little bit here along 5th, can't you? Yeah, there's been a buzz here. And, and it's the one thing that you know you can tell a person who's been at the parade because most <laughs> people say they're marched down fifth avenue you, you don't you march up, up fifth yes. avenue <laughs> and in fact it's unique in the sense that they stop all the traffic on fifth avenue you know traffic is allowed to go down because there might be a few accidents so they keep them up the other end of town and they let us march up the avenue isn't that it? that's some day it's always a tremendous day don't you think Teresa? oh i love today i love to see today is a day we meet all the friends even you know after the pandemic you, you were wondering you were afraid really to reach out to some people because mm. you were wondering whether they're still with us or not. I found that. And today, and over the last two years, we can see them all again, happy and enjoying life. Isn't, Isn't that what it's all well, it's about? And we think back a couple of years ago, the first big event to, to be put on pause was the big march. And then to have it come back in the last couple of years has been a real rejuvenation. You really feel the energy in the city and just a lot of positive energy here, for sure. Yeah. And for two years, you know, the, the, the parade went. Just to in a much sure. smaller version, much, yeah, yeah. Just to make sure that we had continuity. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Tressa, you're going to take us uh, to, through a little bit of an interesting tour involving animals here. <laughs> I certainly am. Less than an hour from Dublin, in Wicklow, there is a truly unique place that provides the opportunity to take a walk with alpacas. Where we are here today is K2 Alpacas. We're very well known for our alpaca and prosecco treks. That's a two hour experience where people go out and walk right across our farm. So all the walks are on our farm. So you get to take your alpaca with you, you get to feed them, you get loads of photos and selfies. And we finish up with a lovely glass of prosecco. We have our kids alpaca experience and that's suitable for small kids, seven and under, and anybody with mobility issues who may not be able to walk in the farm. Therapy work, it has evolved out of our treks whereby we noticed children with special needs, children with autism, we were getting really positive results and we have some lovely, lovely stories from those experiences. We also work with adults and children with special needs. You see the kids evolving, coming out of themselves. You can stay here at K2 Alpacas because we opened seven self-catering cottages last year. Generally we find that people stay between three days to a week and we find they stay on longer because we're right in the middle of everything in Wicklow. So 30 minutes drive in any direction and you can get to all the major attractions in Wicklow. 
I think K2L Packers gives people a sense of well-being and happiness. Everybody who comes here leaves with a smile on their face. And it's the alpacas. They have such a grounding impact on people. And as we've been walking with alpacas there, the marchers have been marching. You can see the lead vehicle of the parade right over my shoulder here. The Fighting 69th right behind them. Tommy, this is our moment of reckoning. Tell us what we see always leading the parade every year. Well, we had Joe Brady lead the parade for a lot of years. He was an Irish bagpiper because yeah. every Irish chieftain had his own bagpiper. And it used to be to try to scare the opponents and run them at the middle of the night. But this year, trust that there's a new piper. He's, he's taken over from Joe Brady, who was actually an aide to the Grand Marshal the day after. I think he marched in 60 parades. I, yeah, he's something like that. I interviewed him. He's done for more than 30 years. He was the lead piper, absolutely. Yes, and, and Sean Delgara, he's going to be the lead piper today. It's his first time leading the New York St. Pat Patrick's Day Parade, taking over from Joe Brady. And we saw Joe Brady this morning and uh, with his daughters, Chris Ann, and his Lauren, Caitlin, and Nikki D, and his wife Anne oh, in the Grand. They're, they're absolutely fantastic at mass they're so excited joe because he's the aide at large today he said to me he needs the parade but he i said to him you won't be leading it today but he said i should i will be he'll be in the aids and he'll be the aide at large today there's sean delagara he uh, was an iona piper that's where he uh, came out of and uh, he, uh, he got a point of it, and you see the policemen on the horses. Speaking of horses, the Irish have cleaned up in Cheltenham. They've beaten the English in practically every race. And here's the honey bucket men. You know what they do, guys. <laughs> well, it, it's probably not a, it's, it's not your uh, mistake to notice that there are huge crowds here. The weather's certainly uh, helping in that. And I think you probably hear them on the microphones. Uh, big cheers for the Army as they march up Fifth Avenue here. And there he is in his first ever leading the parade. Oh. What an honor for that man. He looks well, he really does look well. And he has uh, uh, the Lieutenant Colonel uh, Podrick uh, Lillick is the OIC today. He certainly is, and the active bat battalion is currently deployed to the Horn of Africa for a peacekeeping mission. They are due to return later this year, and we wish them well and keep safe guys out there. And, and you just saw on your screen there the one float that this parade has is the golf cart bringing Randy Novini up from the cathedral <laughs> to our viewing stand and she was waving uh, like a member of royalty just going by there. Uh, so, uh, and that is something noteworthy. It is just the amount of people. This really is just a celebration of friends and family and a lot of familiar faces. Tommy, I feel like already you're starting to recognize some people on the march. Well, I recognize their wolfhounds anyhow. Oh, they're oh, beautiful oh, dogs, yeah. aren't they? I don't know their names, but they are two wolfhounds. They're, they're part of the parade every year. They are, and they're gentle, wind stroked Fierce went the boat. Well, the fight is sixty nine to October twelfth, eighteen fifty one, New York's own uh, God own. That was the fight in 69. They've got one honors, unbelievable. Seven medals of honor, 23 campaign streamers, 63 battle rings. They fought in 48 battles during the, including the Civil War, starting with Bull Run. And the greeting is, of course, Gary Owen. There it is. And they had Just a like wonderful tradition going back that far and also helping to secure the city after 9-11 as well. It's still a very active part of our lives. And I'm going to read the poem I read every year. Here it goes. Come to my window, children dear. There's music down the street. The tune I hear is Gary Owen. It trills from head to feet. The banners wave, the soldiers come. The cheering rings the sky. It's proud I am this day of days. A 69th goes by. My father answered Lincoln's call and yours went overseas. Their Irish spirit urged them on to fight for liberty. Though far from here, in glory graves, our hero kindred lie. They're back in comrade ranks today. The 69th goes by. Look near, near now they're marching past. Oh, glory to the foe. The flag they gave their lives to save, the fairest evermore. We keep their trust our fathers kept. 
their watch would do or die. God bless the guardians of our land. The 69th goes by. We'll be back with more of the New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade in just a moment. You're watching the St. Patrick's Day Parade here on NBC. Right now, the Bergen County Police Pipes and Drums are marching by with Pipes Major Lee Bravies here with Bandmaster Brian McGeever. A beautiful day to be marching up Fifth Avenue here in New York City. The sun has come out. We're going to get to almost 60 degrees, and that means we're going to have a lot of people watching this parade. Tommy and Tressa, a great tradition of all the musical groups that come from around the world and around the tri-state area to participate. This is obviously a local band out of Bergen County, North New Jersey being represented here, but that's a big part of the tradition, isn't it, Tommy? Yeah, and they've been part of the 69th. They marched with the 69th for many, many years, and uh, they have a great sound. Let's hear it. terrific to hear those bands who play such a big part in the community around the year. Obviously, this is a major showcase for them, but these pipe bands play at events uh, all 12 months of the year. Yeah, and you know, every one of the Emerald Societies have their own pipe band yeah. now in the New York City area. And there's pipe bands that come from all over. There's even pipe bands come from Ireland. And we used to have bands come from Argentina because there's an Argentina St. Patrick's Day parade, which is very big. Uh, yes, they look forward to St. Patrick's Day every year and they practice, practice, practice. That's what I was speaking to a bandmaster and he said, what? I said to him, what's the best advice you can give a piper or anybody in music? He said, practice the day you eat. Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> True for so many things. And for so many participants, this does become a family affair. A lot of, especially the pipe bands, a lot of it's handed down over the generations. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, I will have a niece marching today and it will be the sixth generation of the smith Hoey clan that has marched in the Patrick's Day Parade. And this is the little nugget to it. Six generations born in Ireland. There are a lot of six generations here, but this one is born in Ireland. 
On your screen right now, the Londonderry High School Marching Band. They're from Londonderry, New Hampshire. The world famous Lancer Marching Band, the pride of the Londonderry community. About 14% of the high school student body participates in the marching band. Obviously a source of pride for those folks out of New Hampshire. Let's give a listen. <laughs> you know, as someone who uh, was a member of the marching band on Long Island, Hewlett, Hewlett, New York, where I'm from, the amount of work that goes into these events is big. But right now, the Grand Marshal is making his appearance. Uh, Tommy Tresham, tell us a little about him, Kevin Conway. There he is, Kevin, in his 28 years at the firm. Um, uh, he's the vice chairman of Clayton, Dublin and Rice, a global private equity firm. Okay, marching up the avenue with Kevin Conway, of course, are the aides to the Grand Marshal. And we realize that Michael Dunn keeps them all in line over there on the far side of the, uh, the avenue. Uh, the New York County uh, aide is Sean Flafferty. The Bronx County aide is uh, Father Brian McCarthy. The Queens County aide, Mark Edwards. And the Kings County aide is uh, Robert Murphy. Yes, and the Richmond County is Michael J. McKeever. The Westchester County aide is Peter G. Van Slick. The Nassau County aide is John R. O'Brien. The Suffolk County aide is Aggie O'Leary. Rockland County is Dennis Toll. Orange County is Mary P. Sexton Wingen Center. And uh, the United Irish Counties is Rita A. Leiden Lentz. Grand Council of Members Society. Pat Lynch from the Police Department. Everybody knows Pat, he's always on television. He's the Knights of St. Patrick is John Doolan. The aide at large is Joseph A. Brady, the piper we talked about. The Archbishop of New York is an aide, and uh, that aide is a Bishop Edmund J. Whelan. The police department has Lieutenant Karen McCormick, and the fire department has Paul D. Mannix. Tom, yeah. how do they pick the aides every year? I know it's a big it's a big honor in the community as well. Is it sort of commitment to the parade or a, you know, charitable work? Yeah, you get picked uh, based on, you know, e each one that we talked about, you know, each section in the parade, like the New York County, the Bronx County. And it's somebody, there's Frank Comerford we spoke about. There, 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 there he is. There right he is. There. Frank. <laughs> there he is. Happy St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day, Frank. Day, Frank. Frank. Take care. Oh, my Morgan. goodness. Lovely to see you. Yeah, and himself uh, and Sean Lane are exchanging. Uh, you know, but getting back to how to pick them, it's a big honor because you're picked based on the amount of work you've done. There yes. you go, he's going to blow the whistle Warner. again. He's going to blow the whistle again. <laughs> you can't blow there the whistle twice, is. Frank. No, no, that'd be a foul if you blow the whistle twice, Frank. <laughs> There he is. Congratulations to Frank there. <laughs> oh, The whistle gets us started and keeps us going here. Yeah. We'll be right back with more of the New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade right after this.
You're watching the 2023 New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade, well on its way up Fifth Avenue at this point. I'm Gus Rosen, joined by Tommy Andresi, as we do each and every St. Patrick's Day. We just saw the Grand Marshal go by, Tommy. Tell us about that selection process. How do they pick the people who are leading the march that we just saw a short while ago? Well, it's, it's based on, you know, what you do in your community, how popular you are in your community. And, you know, each organization, uh, they sit down together and they decide, well, this is a person who has done so much for so many years, and they get the honor of being the aide to the Grand Marshal. It's a very prestigious event. I didn't realize until I was, I was aiding, I was a uh, Grand Marshal in 2008. Don't ask how I was chosen, because mm, I'm not okay. telling you. That's a deep, dark secret. And there were no brown envelopes that time. There were no brown envelopes. Never, I can guarantee never. you that. It was straightforward. John Dunleavy, God be good to him. We miss John. John, of course, passed away. John Dunleavy asked me, he said, he met me in the Riverdale Steakhouse, and he said to me, Tommy, he said, would you ever consider being Grand Marshal? And I said, John, it's my birthday. I said, but you are really starting to wind me up here. No, he said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm serious. And that was how it became Grand Marshal. And that's the way it becomes, it, it's not a popular choice vote. It's a, a vote of what you've done for the community. Okay. Yeah. And, and what are some of the responsibilities that go along with it? But it's not just marching up Fifth Avenue. Oh, a lot of responsibilities <laughs> when you're Grand Marshal. What Tommy did uh, leading up to the Grand Marshal, he went to every county dinner dance that was on for the month. How many did you go to? Oh, 30, uh, 22, uh, 22 of them. <laughs> and he, he went to all the Irish events, meeting people, greeting people. It, it's a big honor. It's such a big, big honor. We, we already just got a little taste of it a few moments ago, but our, our platform here essentially at some point becomes almost like a sitting room because as people march up Fifth Avenue, they'll start to lean over, yeah. and then you two will lean over. And I, 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 I've done it now now so many years, I start to recognize faces. Like you say, there's some people you only see on St. Patrick's Day, yes. but you you automatically make the connection, don't you? You certainly do. Uh, it's absolutely great to see everybody out and enjoying themselves and bringing the kids, and the, the grandstand is full with lots and lots of people all just enjoying themselves, hanging out with family and friends. Every municipal organization in the city seems to have a marching band, none bigger than the NYPD. Let's take a look at the finest as they march up there. Yes, the band's motto is serve, protect, and entertain. And they have 70 members in their band. And they march in about 30 parades a year. Well, we got when Irish eyes are smiling. I'm sure Danny Boy is somewhere behind. Maybe Danny Boy is chasing them. That's why they're playing it. <laughs> Stop here and play for a while. Uh, I think it's the wonder about you, Gus. <laughs> that band was founded in 1991 when the NYPD decided that it needed a ceremony in unit to provide musical accompaniment. And of course, the police minister now, uh, uh, Keechan Clay Sewell, and uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of brass here today, let me tell you. There's the Holy Name Society, they have many, many members. They go to communion, and they have uh, all kinds of uh, things going on. Michael McInnes is the first vice president. Desmond Stokes is the president. Sue Rapper, Johnny Alla, uh, Benjamin Bellarini, Clemmer Crew, Kenneth Gorman, Mike Cody, and James Gannon. Um, How are you? Oh, there's Herb and Eileen marching yeah, by. Happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> and we're about a moment away from seeing the uh, Emerald Society pipe and drums. You can see them getting ready to come up Fifth Avenue for a viewing point. And you see a lot of people waving into the camera. This takes me back as a kid when, when my father used to march. He was a firefighter. 
And a lot of people waving that camera to a lot of folks at home. That's a big event. You have so many people who are on the uh, sidewalks here on the Upper East Side and so many more who are watching at home, looking to get a glimpse of a loved one, family and friends all coming together today. Oh, definitely. And I know one of our neighbors, Etna Breen, and Renee and Vanessa and Caitlin are watching. And of course, they're all watching in Cork and Loud. Sinead and Kevin and Marion and Patsy and Noreen and Johnny. I could go on forever. Callum and, and Callum Teresa. and Teresa and Harry. It's they're all watching at home. And Alga, it's all my sisters and it's brothers. It's great now that the way the world has changed, you know? Mm. I mean, to this, as I told you, I used to post little shamrocks out. Now we can get shamrocks, we can order them by email and they come right away. Th these ones came from, uh, where are they come from? Kerry? They came from uh, Kelly Bates in County Kerry. Yeah. No kidding. Co yeah. So, so tr I never knew that. Trust you give this to me every single year. I, d I wasn't aware this was an international delivery. Oh. I, it's I, an international I thought you grew it in your garden or something. This is remarkable. No, and unfortunately, and a lot of people said to me, Tommy, why is the shamrock so synonymous with Ireland? And the story is that St. Patrick was trying to bring the faith to Ireland, right? And he was on front of the High King, and he couldn't explain to the High King what the Trinity was. So. The High King said, I'm going to kill you if you can't explain to me what is going on here. And at that point, Patrick prayed and he looked down on the ground and he saw a shamrock. And he pulled the shamrock up and he said, there's exactly what I'm talking about. He said, yeah, there's Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The three of them are on the one stem. And that's the Holy Trinity. That's why the shamrock. New York is not the big apple today. New York is the big shamrock. The big today. That's shamrock. Is. Very good. And all this weekend too. Uh, Friday, St. Patrick's Day parade. <laughs> oh my Lord, folks. Oh yes. Here's the NYPD's Emerald Society making its way up there. Yeah, they're having a big 69th dinner dance, and that's going to be held on the uh, 24th of February. The assistant chief Johnny Kenny is going to be the guest of honor that day and the color guard here is uh, ed bradley and billy o'sullivan pat timoney john uh, donato john kelly john hulahan and tom hulahan so here they are the city of new york the emerald and they founded in 1960 over time the band established themselves by their dedicated work ethic and professionalism yeah they have elected positions the bandmaster is detective kevin mcdonough the pipe major is Detective Dennis Spragu, and the drum major is Kevin McCarthy. And just a couple of little sporting notes, because the fire department and the police department work very well together. So they're going to have a big boxing match. It's coming up on March 31st, when the FDNY is going to take on the NYPD. And then they're going to have Gaelic football. They play Gaelic football. All of them play Gaelic football. And that game, uh, Brian Green, as office of Brian Green, I should add, says it's in September 23rd up in Rockland. So there's a lot of things go on, Gus, besides uh, arresting robbers and solving crimes. <laughs> I know a big shout out to Sean Driscoll, retired MIPD officer, enjoying our coverage here today. The chaplain friend of fellow Brandon Gormley is there. Colleen Jennings is there with them as well. Michael Daly. And the marshal is Michael Daly. Eddie Boyle plays football occasionally. Timothy Black, Thomas Sullivan, Stephen Barry. We'll have more of the 2023 New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade in just a moment.
You have Xavier right here. Yeah. Okay. You're watching the 2023 New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade. Xavier High School is on the screen right now. The pipes and drums, you certainly can uh, see them and hear them. There they are, the Blue Night Band. Certainly a beautiful day to be marching up Fifth Avenue. And there is a new attraction in County Wicklow, the Garden County of Ireland, which allows you to take a walk in the treetops. We're standing on the fantastic 700 meter long wooden treetop walkway here at Beyond the Trees Avondale. And it leads to a fantastic 38 meter tall viewing tower with spectacular views of County Wicklow, the Garden of Ireland. Sustainability was really important for us building this project out. The trees that we used were grown here in County Wicklow. They were harvested here in Wicklow, processed, built into beautiful poles that you can see holding the walkway up. And then the trees were replanted back in to restart the forest. The fantastic thing about Beyond the Trees Avondale is its accessibility. Designed to be as accessible for everyone, for all the family to enjoy. If you've kids in prams or older people in wheelchairs, it's perfectly suitable for that. There's no part of the experience that's greater than a six degree slope, so it's easy to push a chair along. We've seats along the way where people can take a break. There's disabled loos and a changing places facility. I brought my own mum here. She's 90 with my brother in a wheelchair and she really enjoyed it. She felt she felt like a bird here on top of the treetop walk. I also on that day encountered a family with a young girl in a wheelchair and her mum told me it was the first experience that the whole family could enjoy. They could do everything here together, including the slide from the tower. At the end of the treetop walk is the fantastic, iconic viewing tower. It's also made from a wood grown locally here in County Wicklow. It's fully accessible as well, 38 metres tall, that's about 12 storeys high. It's a gentle incline, takes you round and round and round till you get to the top with wonderful views of County Wicklow, the Garden County of Ireland. If you're brave enough, Ireland's longest slide is there. You can slide from the top right down to the bottom. We've had kids and big kids on it. The oldest person on the slide has been 92 years of age, so no excuses for everyone not to slide down. Avondale is accessible for people young and old. You don't have to be Bear grills to come out and enjoy nature it brings nature to you. So in a very short walk from the wall garden, you're out on top of the trees without ever having to climb a big slope and you're immersed in nature. If the birds sing in, if the trees all around you, it's a wonderful experience. Well, you certainly see the lush green of Ireland in that piece right there. I mean, the intensity of that color always just speaks to the day, don't you think, Tommy? Yeah, and speaking about photographers, the photographer for the St. Patrick's Day Parade was a gentleman named uh, Dominic Tottino. And, uh, you know, he took unbelievable shots. He did unbelievable work for us. He has decided that he's not going to cover the parade anymore when it's marching because it's a little bit too much work. And for the first time ever, he's sitting at home with his mom today oh, enjoying nice. the St. Patrick's Day Parade. I'll tell you one thing, he has covered us with pictures for years. A fantastic photographer. Dominic, we wish you well. And we will be looking for you at all the other events. Even though you're not covering the parade, we will see you at the other events. And, and don't you note that over the years, there are a lot of yes. people who are, are, are actually of participants year after year it's a, it's a real tradition it is 20 years he did it for dominic thank you so much we love the pictures he covered it so good the pictures would talk to you and, and that's the thing about this uh, parade you know you see all these people that said they're all volunteers everybody that's in the parade and they donate like people say when do you start uh, getting ready for the next parade yeah. tomorrow tomorrow that's when you start because you can't do it any other way. Look at the masses of people that were here. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to break your arm. You've been waving so much, Tommy, and we're still early on. I know, yeah. I just spotted Sean 
Kane up there in the street. Look at him just behind the side the grandstand. Gentlemen. And Tommy, tell us about some of the dignitaries we're going to see today, including Michael Martin. Well, he's here somewhere. In fact, here he comes. I mean, your timing is incredible. Michael Martin. Of course, a Corkonian like Trassa here. <laughs> Trassa's from Cork, so is he from Cork, so uh, she loves him. And uh, he's heading in the hard direction. It must be the Corkonian. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is a Cork takeover. You I mean, what can I, I what? say? What can I say? You either have a connection or you don't. <laughs> there you go. I mean, th this tells the story. Poor wee loud. And we'll get you in the weekend. Don't worry. We're playing them in football this weekend, so we, we get them this weekend. What can I say? You're still talking about 1957. Yeah, well, <laughs> we go back a long way and... Uh, We're just getting ourselves ready here as we, we see the group coming up behind us. These will be the state troopers behind us. Yeah, right? that's yeah. the New York State Troopers. And what, what a body of men they are. And uh, they have a fantastic band as well. So it's very good. A fantastic band, the New York State Pipe Band. There we see them. And Tressa, it looks like you have some company up here in the booth. Why don't you tell us who is joining you for a bit of a chat? Michal Martin, the Antonista, Tafalda Road, Godin, New York. That means, folks, uh, I'm, I'm introducing you, Michal Martin. Welcome to New York. Good morning, my good. Augusta Sunta Gunnoy. It's a wonderful day, and uh, it's a great privilege and honor for me, representing the Irish government and the Irish people, uh, to be in New York uh, at what is the the, the most historic and iconic display of the Irish diaspora and particularly Irish America. Uh, and, you know, we've had tough years with COVID-19 and it's so fantastic to see such large crowds here. And, you know, again, what I've sensed all week is the heartfelt uh, sense of history and family uh, in, in terms of the celebration of, of St. Patrick and what it means to Irish American families uh, whose forefathers and foremothers came from very uh, difficult and challenging situations, poverty and so on, fleeing famine. Uh, and they cherish that tradition, they cherish that heritage, and that, I think, is what you're witnessing today, the manifestation of that sense of identity and struggle. And now, uh, yeah, as we know, Irish Americans being central to the, the, to the society in, in, in the United States. And if I may, just to thank Irish America once again for your heartfelt support down through the decades, from successive presidents uh, in terms of supporting peace on the island of Ireland and, and helping us to arrive at that historic moment 25 years ago which we celebrate and will be celebrating in April of this year and that's why that's one of our key themes in St. Patrick's Week in America thanking Irish America from the roots from the New York people who went to your elected representatives <laughs> and you also brought good news to the Gaelic Athletic Association of New York didn't I you? did indeed we were in a position to allocate half a million um, to uh, the, the um, GEA in, in, in uh, New York and um, looking forward to getting down there at some stage because I was there the last time I was here I'm very conscious of the role of the Gaelic Athletic Association here um, in, in America and particularly in New York and indeed we are honoured to have Larry McCarthy, uh, your New York GA man, as the president of the Gaelic Athletic Association over the last two years, and Cork seeing how these stories are. Sorry, Cork, is it? Well, Cork look, Cork, Cork, Cork share their kind of ingenuity and intelligence and brilliance everywhere, you know. <laughs> Michal, good luck to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very Enjoy much. Enjoy the rest of the day. Yeah, what Thank did you I very say? much. What does Roy Keane say? Irish by birth, Cork by the grace of God. Exactly. Mila, mila, Can I put a bit of that? Thank you, Mr. Thank Martin. You. Thank you. Happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> We'll have more of the parade right after this.
pipes and drums of New York State Courts on your screen right now. It just seems that every organization has its own pipes and drums group, and today they provide the soundtrack to the New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade. We're glad that you're with us here on WNBC. Maybe you're watching on our website, NBCNewYork.com, and these days, wherever we stream, you can watch us as well. Two million people in person and many more taking part of this tradition on screens across the world, and we're glad to be with you once again. Tommy and Tressa, at this point the parade, what are we seeing and what are you reflecting upon now? We're just looking at the New York State Court's pipes and drums now, and on the banner we can see that Tara Mulcahy is there. Her sister Maureen Mulcahy, she's a retired lieutenant uh, of the MIPD, and, and her dad, Dennis Mulcahy, retired from the bomb squad, all very involved with Project Children and the Mulcahy Scholarship. And the band was formed in 1976 by Patrick Green, John Purcell, and John Dolan. And they're, they're all court officers. Major Donna Ever is the band master. The kilt is the mech, the art of plan, green, navy, and yellow international color of law enforcement. And we see Chief Michael Maglione and Chief Joseph Barcillier out there marching. Steve Algar is the lead uh, tip drum sergeant, and Mike Lynch is the pipe major. Margaret Monaghan and Dan McWheeney are the drum majors. Rob O'Connor is the bandmaster, and Desi O'Hannon is the charter member. So we got them all. And, and we. Every year, every year we bring you a special edition. The McCallum family, they're growing up right before our eyes. I think this is 12 years in a row. That's a dozen, huh? a lucky dozen. Lucky we're, dozen. We're going, for, we're going for Baker's next week, next year, 13 next year. See you all next year. Lovely seeing you There's all Maureen, again. Maureen, Cormac, and Charlie. There they are. And oh Brian McCallum. And Brian, of course. A great man in this business, let me tell you. The kids are really the reality check, aren't they? When you see the kid once a year and you realize how much they start to get taller than the parents, that's when you really know you've, <laughs> <laughs> you've got an established family. Ah, there oh, he is. Oh, there he is. There he is. That's Brian the father. The proud father. Oh, why wouldn't he be? I always say to my kids, when you're taller than me, you have to take care of me. <laughs> <laughs> you're never really taller than your parents. But but physically, you might be, but you know, you're still. Yes, exactly. Adult. Exactly. New Jersey Field Music, Anthony Michael Seppi is the director, the New Jersey Fife and Drums. Here they are, a group of musicians who perform in late 18th century music that would have been performed by a military corps during the Revolutionary War. And membership is open to all people 15 years of age and older. Practices are held in the Westfield at the Knights of Columbus Hall on North Avenue every Tuesday night, Gus. You want to join, Gus? The, uh, just noting the traffic lights turning to green right on cue for us here. And uh, we have uh, another, I don't know how many pipe bands are in this parade, but there's quite a few of them. It's difficult to tell us to come way behind you who they are, but the sound is really good. The color on this pipe band is incredible, all the purpose. This is the American Irish legislators. That's the New York University Pipes and Drums there, performs at the universities and other functions throughout the year, and anybody can join. The instructors encourage support and teach members at weekly practices. There's Brian Murray, he's the pipe major. John Henderson is the quartermaster. They all look so strong coming up there. I mean, 
I think you have to be a pipe master, you, a pipe major, you have to be born that way, because I don't think I could ever look good in one of them outfits, oh. would I? <laughs> Unless you're all high you heels or something, could I? Yeah. That's a vision. Me that's a, a vision. Yeah. Oh my, that's a, some vision. Well, it's about 40 pounds of instrument that they have to carry as they walk up these many blocks. It's quite yeah. impressive. Yes, that's what Joe Brady was telling us, yeah. how, how heavy it is. I never realized that. That's the Port of Atari ever the society. There are Irish wall pipes, and the uh, Port of Atari was founded in 1979, the pipe maker is Brian Ahern. Yes, and the band has grown significantly over the years. And Mike Conlon uh, is a member of the Port of Authority Ever Society, the son of a well-known Russ Common dad, Mike, who was a drummer with the Van Ahern Pipe Band in Brooklyn for years. In fact, John Hulan tells me that they're one of the oldest pipe bands in America, along with the County Tyrone Band. These bands were formed like Back to 1930, I mean, that, that's a long time. The uh, the traditions here are, are remarkable. They, they do go back many, many years. Oh, they certainly do. And in 1921, the state of New York and New Jersey received consent from Congress to form an interstate agency to develop and modernize the entire port district in order to improve commerce and trade. Let me see them. You would watch the Port Authority Police Emerald Society pipe band there. We'll be back with more of the break coverage after this. The 2023 New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade, right now, the North Babylon High School Marching Band putting a pep in everybody's step. Home of the Bulldogs. Jeremy Nassau is the principal. Condi Legoda is the assistant principal. Uh, Jeffrey Raymond is the also an assistant principal. And the director of music is Elizabeth O'Brien. All good Irish names there. It certainly is. And their mission is to prepare students to be thoughtful, informed, and productive in the 21st century citizens value learning, collaboration, and creative skills. There you go. And the director of art and music is Elizabeth O'Brien. And another Long Island institution, Chaminade High School. And you know, 
this parade stands for many things. Uh, you know, you meet people all over the world who know about the St. Patrick's Day Parade. And Sister Kathleen McManus, who is a Blauville Dominican, wants to say hello to her mom and McManus from Drumkeel in County Leitrim. We hear the parade is coming in loud and clear uh, <laughs> to the Dominican sisters in Blauville. The parade is on all the televisions in the mother house. Thank you very much. And this goes to the prioress up there, Sister Michaela Connolly. So, the convent has a well on <laughs> line up there today, Gus. And some more of the schools that are marching here as well. You're right, Tommy. So many people to gather around the television as they're preparing to cook the meal and get ready for things. I remember our house growing up, St. Patrick's Day was my grandmother's birthday. And so oh, God it was a her. big celebration. Oh. And we'd be watching the parade on television and we'd be cooking the corned beef. Again, my mother would be cooking the corned beef. Yeah, but she did a wonderful job of that every year. And we'd be celebrating uh, all things Irish, and that included my grandmother. <laughs> well, that's another thing about it. You know, there's a lot of these guys, the police, they will come down, march in the, in the parade. And Scott Griffith is a detective in the Yonkers PD. He's a PESW vice president. He marches, he records, he goes home and watches. Thank you very much, Scott. I hope you're enjoying yourself if you got home by, by now. But that's what we need. We need to push the ratings up us. The Randolph Bacon, Acad Bacon Academy Band right here. Yes, the Virginia 91st Air Force Junior ROTC Band. And it's an award-winning organization. There were approximately 40 cadet musicians there. And they performed throughout the year at parades and lots of events, concerts and activities. representatives from Catholic Health here with us today. They're one of the sponsors of our great parade and uh, we love to have them along with us here. It's, it's just great. Uh, Patricia, pa Patrick M. O'Shaughnessy is the president and chief executive officer. Yeah, and he oversees a mission-driven 3.2 billion head system in Long Island encompassing six acute care hospitals there. Right now we're taking a look at the United Irish Counties Association of New York. Tommy and Tress, I know this is a very important group in helping to uh, organize a lot of events in the Irish community uh, throughout the year. Oh yes, this is the umbrella association for all the counties. I see um, Tom Tuffy there, Mayor Driscoll, and K Katie Barrett is there. And that their banner, in the front of the banner there, right beside them, you can see they were formed in 1904, the harp, the national symbol of Ireland, and the back of the banner is the four provinces. There's their officers. Uh, Michael O'Reilly is an officer, he's from Cabin, he's the president. Uh, PJ Smith is the first vice president. Uh, the second vice president is Anne Henry, the treasurer, Sean McGovern. Evelyn McDonough Doherty is there as well. Neil Callahan, of course, Cathy T. Hogan does a great job on the journals, and there, there's so many people there. Uh, Sean O'Dwyer Wires two daughters are there, uh, Regina and Maureen, and uh, Mary O'Brien, Betty McLaughlin. Oh my goodness, and Kit Smith is there, and of course a good friend of mine, Angela Anna, who's the president of Waterford's marching. Unbelievable, they all get together. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. John Duggan, John is trying to get the Drive Irish... Drive to revive. That's yes, right, yes, that's John. right. And he's doing such a good job getting the county back together and encourage membership. And the fish, of course, the 83rd fish for the United Irish Counties is Sunday the 11th of June. And that's going to be at... Um, the, where is it going to be? I couldn't see my own notes here. And the fish is always on the 20th. 11th of June, yeah, in the North American establishment. Unbelievable. So the first of many banners we're going to be seeing here in the uh, hours ahead. Tommy, talk about the honor for someone to be able to hold that. You know, I, I've talked to people who said that is a, it's a special position. Well, it certainly is. And we saw Sean Lane go out there and he shook hands with uh, Michael O'Reilly. I mean, to get the job of holding the banner as you march up Fifth Avenue is an incredible day. There's John Duggan over on the Irish flag on the far side. He's the man that we talked about. But, you know, you get you, you, yes. you get called by your uh, association, let you be in a county organization or wherever you are, and they will say to you, like, uh, uh, you know, Jimmy Nocton and Bernie, hey, you want to hold the banners <laughs> today? Yeah, it, it's the honor of how long you've marched with them. Sure. And some of the... Uh, 
There's Angela Allen right there, coming this, right under her. Oh yeah, there she is, and Pamela Lacey right there is Angela, and Pamela Lacey, Deirdre O'Hare. And, and also Pamela. very important, not just the banner, Chuck, you have to hold on to Frank O'Keefe there, blocking the, he's blocking the wind coming off that banner because he's such a big man, he got that strength. But those, you see the treads on the back side of the banner or the, the pieces of kind of what, we run a wire, they're, uh, they're uh, rope. Ropes. If it's a windy day, oh, they yes. control the banner. That's how they control the banner. Oh, and we see before the castle, there's the Castlery band, Brass Reed and band from Castlery County, Ross Common. And uh, the leader of the band is Richard Thomas. And Sean Mannion is there, who's the guest of honor to dance, Danny Brock is there. And the band director is Neil Flanagan. Slowly around the fields of Attenroy, indeed it is, but Mildred Byrne is there. She's 78 years old and she only wears the leader wheels when she's marching. She teaches step and line dances three times a week, so congratulations. The band is over 100 years old. the banner is Douglas Hyde. He's the first president of Ireland. He was the outstanding figure in the struggle for the prevention and extension of the Irish language back in 1893 when he founded the Gaelic League. And the back of the banner is St. Patrick baptizing the princess as Muski. And, and on I, the US flag we have Rob McGinty, a New York firefighter. And uh, we also have Owen Tansy, Liam Tansy, Patrick Tansy and Justin Brady. We have all of the Roscommon folks here. And you know, there's a great tradition. We want to give a shout out to uh, Gertrude Kelly Hamilton. Uh, every year, she would be with her brother Martin Kelly down on 59th Street and to watch it from the Sherry Netherland. We're saying a big uh, hello to her today. And this is coming from her son. So the Roscommon folks are out here in style. They are, and the president, oh Jane Tansy, the vice president, Come on, the Rossies. and Carl Sugru, and Jane, Brendan, and Donald are marching. Look at the Rossies. <laughs> We'll be back with more of the 2023 New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade.
New York City a destination for so many people, including these young musicians from Cahoka, Missouri. They are members of the Clark County High School Band. Clark County High School's motto, educating today's children for tomorrow's world. Beautiful visual and a great sound. I love that red and white. Red and white for loud, red and white for calm. <laughs> so that's our, our colors. And we have some uh, two major counties coming our way right now, don't we? We have indeed. That's County Sligo. We see the banner there. Sligo is known as the 8th County. In the front of the banner, we're looking at St. Attractor from Kilmac Take. Um, the back, we can't see it, but we'll see it in a minute. Captain William T. Ling, a captain in the French Army who came to Ireland in 1798, and he fought at the Valmonic in the G with General Hubert. There and Father is. William Cleary is the chaplain, Anne Henry is the president, Patrick McGettigan, a long time around, Mary Gilligan, Maureen Crowley. And, uh, you know, when you look at this, you say the job that these people do. Ray Conlon, James Normandy, Eugene Conlon, and uh, Joan Lavin McCurry and Martina Kelly, two great women from uh, Sligo. Colette Connolly is the recording secretary. Trish McLaughlin is uh, also recording secretary. Mike and John Leahy, they're there. Right now, we're going to turn to our colleague, Rena Novini. She has a guest from Air Lingus. Rena. Good morning. Good afternoon. At this point, uh, I'm joined with several guests here from Air Lingus. Thank you all so much for being with me. I want to ask you first, Air Lingus has been serving New York in this tri-state area for so long. Tell me a little bit about the history. Well, we're very proud to say in Air Lingus that we've been serving so this far. area for 60 years over and back. And it's just a great day to be here. It's a great day to be Irish. It's a great day to be part of Air Lingus. Tell me a little bit about, about the energy you see here, and I imagine as a uh, cabin crew, this is kind of the energy you feel when you're taking passengers to and so from. So honored and privileged to be here representing the national flag carrier here in, in New York today. Um, the atmosphere is absolutely amazing. Enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah, the weather, we couldn't ask for, for a better day, really. Oh, really better day, because in fairness to New York, it's dry, it's warm. At home, it's currently raining, so it's a really, really good day here in New York. Yeah. Bill Byrne jo joining us as well. Bill, tell us about some of the deals that people can expect when they're well, booking these flights. Well, the important thing to, is not to forget we fly four flights a day, one from Newark, two from JFK, and one from JFK to Shannon. And then anybody that has relatives in Manchester, we also fly daily from Manchester. And in honor of the greatest parade in the U.S., we have $100 off on all economy tickets, $200 off on business class tickets from April and in the fall. So we hope everybody will buy a ticket and come back to visit. Ireland soon. Yeah, no excuses. And I think after today, a lot of people have Ireland on the mind. So our guests from Aer Lingus, thank you all so much. We'll send it back to you. Okay, Ran, I'm wait, ready to fly away right now. County Wicklow, Tommy and Tressa, tell us about it. There we have County Wicklow, the Garden County of Ireland. Uh, in the banner, we see St. Kevin, its home in Glendalough, tucked away in the Wicklow Hills, is a valley of two lakes and a monastery of two saints. St. Kevin was responsible for the foundation of the monastery, which expanded around his tomb after his death, around 1618. And the back of the banner are the three flowers, Parnell, Byrne, and Dwyer. And their president is Kenneth Deegan, the vice president is uh, Nicholas Deegan, Pat Laver is second vice president, Frank Sutton is the treasurer, Ed Kenny is the corresponding secretary, and Darren Regan is the recording secretary. And there's a lot of Wicklow County Councillors out today, as there's a lot, of, a lot of politicians from Ireland as uh, Xavier High School band goes marching by. They, they have a great sound too, they're not playing for us at the moment, but the Blue Knights started out originally as a jazz band. That, that's a wee bit jazzy there, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Each cadet wears a gold star. Imagine that. 350 cadets in the ROCT. And all looking good as the march up the avenue here. It's, uh, you know, it's a hectic time now, Gus, isn't it? They're, they're coming thick and fast now. And at this point, they've been marching for about 20 or so blocks. I think you know, for people at home, we're at 63rd Street. They start to march at 44th Street. So this is, they've yes. really got their groove going on now. And we're looking at the Knights of St. Patrick right now. Oh, yeah, there we see the Knights. And John Tully is the president. He's also the chair of the board of directors of the Emerald Island Immigration Center in Woodside. And Siobhan Denny, of course, is the executive director and does a great job to assist new immigrants as well as her husband, Dan. Kate Sheila McCarthy is also involved yeah. in it. They have the, the dinner going today. And, of course, uh, John Doolan is the aide to the Grand Marshal today. He's the son of the late Connie Doolan, who was a Grand Marshal in 92. So... It's, it's a great day when you get called out. 
And we are going by counties here. They're coming up thick and fast here. I think this should, should be Tyrone. Tyrone, County Tyrone. There is the led by the band. There's the banner. There's County, um, the banner, a new banner, a new banner this year. So um, it's made by Sean Dunahy and he's marching today. The, on one side is St. Patrick and the other side is Thomas Clark. Thomas Clark, a key member of the Irish Revolutionary and a leader of the 1918, 1916 Easter Rising. He was among the rebel leaders executed on May the 3rd. And of course, on the back of the banner, we just seen it there, was Thomas J. Clark, and he was born in 1858 on the Isle of Wight, but grew up in County Tyrone. And the president is Mike Clark, marching with his wife, Mary, uh, Bernadette uh, Fitzpatrick, and her brother, Michael Fitzpatrick, Owen Rogers, Seamus McNabb is there in the middle, I see him, uh, Claire and Desi Reed, and uh, there's a lot of folks out there. Make the man who made the banner is there, Danny Brown, chairman of the New York Minor Board. They do a great job in terms of uh, bringing the football. We'll be back with more in the 2023 New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade. in the New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade, and we're talking about County Tipperary. And there yeah. it is, the Premier County. The front of the banner is a rock of Cashel called St. Patrick's Rock, and the back is Charles J. Kickham, famous Irish leader. And we have uh, the President, is Nuala Patel, and the, the aide, uh, the Marshal out in front of him today. What a, what a great man he is. I mean, the, Martin Dunn. The Martin Dunn, he served Tipperary, he served the Irish community for a long, long time. And Norbert Hennessy is also there. Norbert, who has been a fantastic man. Linda Hurd, a great Tipperary woman and a great runner. Margaret Purcell, of course, she's another of the photographers. Uh, and uh, here's Joe and Jeanette Collins shouting Tommy there. So, uh, yeah, I see them there at the end of the line. <laughs> Manahan Society of New York. There's the banner, three patriots, Sean Connolly, Tom Clark, and James Connolly. Manahan got a new banner this year, and it looks great. It's much lighter, they said. St. McCartan is the patron saint of Manahan. The president is Cy Hughes. And he's of Slantibbert. Mara Lamb is the new secretary, and uh, she's doing a great job, I understand. Tony McKenna is the vice president. Uh, Barry McEntee is there, Mike Sherry is there, Jackie Kerr is there, 
Anne Marie McQuaid, James McQuaid. And Catherine Flood is marching with her daughters, very involved in the Ashing Irish Centre. She is. Her daughters are Sienna, Stella, and Michaela. And of course, there you, there you see them, and Maddy and Ruby O'Hara is also marching today. There they are. The Courtney family have a big uh, representation. Uh, Ryan, Kira, and uh, you know, they're all there today. And Mara Lam, new, the new secretary, and the past honoree, she's doing a great job with County Monaghan. And, and Marie McQuaid and James McQuaid. And the car Courtney I was talking about was Courtney Trainer. She's also very involved with the Monaghan Society. And, uh, you know, a great story about the Mona about Monaghan is the, the Irish Echo was actually formed by Charles Conley from Monaghan and Ray O'Hanlon and Paul Finnegan down there now doing a great job at the Irish. Oh, there they are. There to go. There's the Monaghan crowd. They're, they're everywhere. They're all over the place. They certainly are. And, and Catherine was telling me that um, they, they are Team Happy Feet each year at Christmas time. They run a terminal sock drive for the homeless at the Ashling Irish Community Centre in Woodlaw in the Bronx. All the girls do it. Her daughter Sienna, Stella and Mickey. Good girls. And the president, of course, Cyril Hughes, he's done a great job of gathering people together for today. And uh, there's a lot of Monaghan folks out there. They're from everywhere, from Carrick Macross to Clon Tibber and, and Jerry Finley, of course, the famous van dealer from Monaghan. And here's the cross, Crossball the Orchestra is coming here, right there. This is a fantastic story, folks. The Crossball the Orchestra was formed to bring kids from the various bother areas to play music. Yeah. And uh, they are in Carnegie Hall tonight. Uh, they're playing in Carnegie Hall tonight. I see one of my sister's best friends there, Benedicta Vicaro and Isabel Vicaro is there. Yeah. And they're marching. The kids would be too tired to march. So the parents are marching while the kids are training. Yes, they're practicing down in Carnegie Hall. Sharon Tracy Dunn, she is the CEO and the Peace Proms lady. She's peace through music since 1995. What a great idea, bringing all these children from all over Ireland together. 35,000 of them. And now making their way, uh, members from the County Longford Division. Well, there we see Sheila Lynette Linnet. Right now, we're going to turn to our colleague, Rena Novini, who has a guest from the Rockefeller Foundation. Rena. Two guests, as you said, from the Rockefeller Foundation. I'm here with Roy Steiner and Selena Patton. Thank you both so much for being here. Uh, the Rockefeller Foundation has been committed to the well-being of really people all over the world for a century now. So I know you work with the Food Initiative, and this year's theme is Fighting Hunger. Talk to me about the work you do and also the scale of the crisis that we're talking about. Sure. Thanks, Brenna. You know, the United States really is facing a food and nutrition um, crisis. We've got over 40 million Americans who are food Secure. A million of them in here are here in New York City. And not only that, we've got um, increasing diet-related diseases, which are now the number one uh, cause of mortality in the United States. And so we're super proud to be working with Mayor uh, Adams to get healthy food to the people who need it. That's a problem that we saw worsened during the pandemic, right? But it's not a problem that has gone away. Exactly. That, that problem is very real, and we need to be doing systematic work for, for that. And Selena, I know you moved here from Dublin about a decade ago, is that right? Yeah, I moved over here 14 years ago, and I've always been involved with the community giving back from the Children in Hospital Ireland initiative also, and now with the New York Irish Centre. So I've always been giving back. And my first job here was at the Rockefeller Foundation itself. And to be part of an institution with a 110 year history and to see it be so nimble in the COVID-19 pandemic with our testing and now with our climate and food initiative, it really is an inspiring organization to be a part of. It's so wonderful to see you part of the parade this year. Thank you both so much from the Rockefeller Foundation. We appreciate it. We'll send it back to you. Rana, thanks very much. Appreciate that. And in County Longford on the screen right now, Tracy. There they are, and the, ba the banner we're looking at, it. the front is St. Mel, who legend tells us he was St. Patrick's nephew and he became the first bishop of Arda. He in turn baptized St. Bridget, the female patron saint of Ireland, and on the back of the banner is the coat of arms. Their president is Patrick York, uh, Vice President Michael Carrick, the Recording Secretary, uh, Mary Beth uh, Broadenham, the Financial Secretary, Anne Marie Denicol, and uh, Kathy York is there, and uh, Joe uh, Prunty is there, Elizabeth Armstrong. 
They received the County Wexford Association of New York and on their banner, they got a new banner. So many counties this year got a new banner. It features the legendary Commodore John Barry, regarded along with John Paul Jones and John Adams as the father of the American Navy. Barry was born in County Wexford and after landing in America as a story, went on to become General George Washington, the most trusted naval commanders in the Revolutionary War. And their president is John Murphy Esquire. John originally hams from Rat Gorman. He's now an attorney, his own law practice here. His sons, James Franklin and Nathaniel Sampson Murphy, are all there today. Uh, Jimmy Gleason, Shea Furlong, Sarah Fenning, and uh, Elizabeth Dowd. Uh, it takes a lot of people to put these uh, counties on the, on the avenue, but John Murphy done a great job. Uh, a graduate of the University of Notre Dame, of course, that's to be expected. Where are we now? Right now, we go to Rana Novini, who is joined by Governor Hochul. Rana. Yes, I'm here. Governor Hochul has just uh, come down the parade route or up the parade route. Tell us how it's been for you so far. How's the energy been? Uh, unfortunately, a little bit of static there. Some technical gremlins getting in the way of that uh, interview with the governor. We're certainly hearing the bands loud and clear. Start over Black Rock, stand loud and clear there. Let's listen to them. We'll be back with more on the 2023 New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade in just a moment. Test it. Right. What are we doing? Right. Test it. You're watching the St. Patrick's Day Parade here on NBC. It's always a somber moment in the parade when we reflect upon the 343 lives lost at 9-11 all those years ago. Yes, and each flag represents a firefighter's life lost on 9-11. We will never forget. And Danny Hogan is holding one of those flags as well as John Brown. And um, it is felt this goes... It is felt through the parade that this does every, it's a good introduction to the fire department to serve of duty of public service and each one holding a banner for the new recruits. We take a moment to pause and reflect. Yes. Yes. 
Jennifer Tisha. Hi, Governor. Hi, Governor. More slack. Take the slack. More slack. You got slack. Moment of silence. Three hundred forty three and still counting. And you're watching the New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade.
You're watching the 2023 New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade as we gaze up into the skies up there. Boy, you couldn't have ordered up a better day for this parade, eh, Tressa? Yes, you couldn't. And you know what? It's a whole weekend of parades here <laughs> in New York, a whole month of celebrating St. Patrick. Tomorrow, there's going to be a big parade up in up in Yonkers and the Grand Marshal's father Brendan Fitzgerald and that's going to start folks at 1 p.m. and out in Rockaway that Ma Grand Marshal was Michael O'Toole from the Teamsters and uh, Michael O'Reilly was the Gael of the year out there and um, he's the United Irish County's president and in Bayside on March the 25th the Grand Marshal is Bob Reed, Betty McLaughlin and Mary McCarthy and Mary Clark is an aide there to the Grand Marshal Lots of parades, Tommy. Oh yeah, there's always there's always somewhere you can walk us, that's for sure, especially around St. Patrick's Day. There has been a lot of parades that's passed over already. A lot of them have their days before uh, the pass. I see Joe McManus over there with Mayor Driscoll on the far side shaking hands. And uh, you know, a lot of these uh, groups are stopping to, uh, I'm not sure what they're stopping for, Gus, but they're acknowledging the Grand Marshal, I guess he's down there. Uh, Pat Lynch, of course, uh, a, fire, a policeman who is with the, the police He's on the stand over there because what happened is the Grand Marshal and the aides march up to the end of uh, the parade route and then they come back and they stand up here on the uh, stand to take uh, the salute from everybody. This is the Emerald uh, Society Green Berets Fire Department City of New York and uh, there's a lot of Green Berets here today. You start with the Green Berets and you go to the white hats of the officers yes. and everyone behind. I see. The bravest here, the FDNY. This is the group that my dad marched yes. with many, many yes, times over doing. the years. Yeah. This would always be a big event in our house when the firefighters rolled up. That brings back good memories. Oh my gosh, it does. <laughs> and, and, and over the years, as my dad went up the ranks, you saw that the hat changed color and some oh. of the braiding on the uniform. He eventually retired a battalion chief. But uh, very good. Wow. He was thrifty though. He kept the same. He also kept himself trim. He kept the same uniform. He just changed the color of the buttons when wow. he became a chief. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you you can't man. beat that. You can't beat that. You cannot beat that. And of course, um, there was a few parades past us. You, you were saying, Tommy, and the Rockaway. Mike Ben does a great job with that par parade out in Rockaway. Tom Levy was their um, Grand Marshal, and Catherine Levins and Brian. Ly Brenda Lyons, they're the business women up here, out, out, out in Rockland. See you. Up there. <laughs> well, it traces its roots all the way back to 1648, Gus, so, you know, when they were just uh, prowling patrol in the street with buckets, hoops and ladders and after the Civil War volunteer firefighters yielded to a paid metropolitan police force and that's where they came from. There's quite a few of them on the avenue here today. There certainly is. We'd like to thank them for their service. We read, really would. The fire commissioner Lauren Kavanagh and Thomas Richardson is the chief of the department and of course there's Lieutenant Larry Mack who is retired and Father Mike McNamara there. They just keep coming and they, they keep coming, including the Seaford High School marching band. The Seaford Vikings, Seaford they High are School. from Long Island. The other band director is Anthony Roma, and he's been professional percussionist and educator since 1991. And Christopher Condiano heads around. And the marching band is Stephanie Patterson and uh, Barbara Sherwin, I think. They're going to play the Galway Piper, that's the one they're going to be playing when the march passes. We see if they get it, yeah, they've got a beautiful colour and an even more beautiful sound as we see more firemen walking through. <laughs> what a job to do for us, to keep our lives safe in this big city and they risk their own every day of their life. But I was looking at those 343, the saying was when we were coming down, they were going up. They were going up to see if they could save people. Certainly not.
course, the Holy Name Society of the Fire Department Walk. Uh, Joe Gross is their battalion chief, uh, and uh, Chris Ward is there. He's uh, vice president. Frank Morrissey, Brian Barrett, uh, Charlie McKeown, Thomas Martin, Aidan O'Brien. Now the other members perform corporal walks of mercy to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and give drink to the thirsty. John Bryant, I see them out there. Brian Phillips, Sean Dockery. Fire Department of New York. Well, you know, when you look at this today, Gus, and we talk about, we always talk about the corned beef and cabbage, how it became to be uh, the, the meal that everybody eats on St. Patrick's Day. And uh, of course, in Ireland, uh, bacon and ham is the meal that everybody eats. And, uh, tell the story about how the ham came about. It was because, you know, if you were a tenant farmer, you weren't allowed to have any any uh, kind of animals. So when they would uh, put the slaughter the pigs, they would put them in a big, 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 big barrel and they would fill it over with cabbage. They would put cabbage on it the height of the side of the house. And that way, when the, if the boss man came around, he couldn't smell the beef, he'd only smell the cabbage. So uh, that was how they killed it. A bit of a trick there. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. Crafty, isn't it? Yeah. We're hearing a lot of bagpipes today, and we're seeing some inland pipes. You know, the bagpipes used to lead the warriors into battle. It's tradition. And the Irish pipes are called the inland pipes, which are played with the elbow. Inland pipes have a different harmonic structure, and they're sounding sweeter and quieter and than other bagpipes. Inland pipes are often played indoors and they're almost always played sitting down because of course they use the elbows to push it in fantastic and so many things goes on in this city on St. Patrick's Day but uh, Joan Hensey would like to remind you that uh, Leitrim are coming out to play in New York on Chris on not Christmas Eve, Tommy, that's too far away. <laughs> on Easter Eve, they're going to play at Gaelic Park in the first round of the Cardiff Championship. And of course, Gaelic games are played in uh, Gaelic Park every week to play hurling and football up there. And they might have board if you want to get your kids involved, and they did do a great job. They certainly do, and I have to give a shout out to Shannon Gales, hurling, football, and Camogie Club in Queens. If you want to get your children into it, boys and girls, they're all very welcome. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Getting a lot of waves from up. the FDNY Emerald Society here. And you know, there's lots of people celebrating their birthdays today. Hello, Happy John Green. To all those. There you go, John Green with a white cap on. There you go. He was one of the guys in 9-11. Oh, there he is. 9-11. I remember seeing John when he came back from 9-11. I'll never forget. Thank you for all you've done and all you're doing, folks. I'll tell you one thing. What are you running for, Tom? I'm running what, what for anything that I can get. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if it pays, I'm running for it. Okay. That's all. You've got him excited, that's for sure. We'll be back with more of the parade next this.
the 2023 New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade. Joining us now, James Cahill, who is a regional vice president with Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. James, happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Oh, thanks so much for having me. Tell us about your organization and your involvement here today. Well, I represent our labor and union clients, and the parade has really become something that resembles the working class. It's really a celebration of the working class. So we're so happy to be here and we, as we live out our mission to materially and measurably improve the health of all New Yorkers, what better than to watch so many New Yorkers march so long today? Really, we could. Well, you know, it's a very good organization and uh, you've had a lot of fans, I'm sure, shouting at you out here. There's a lot of members on the street, isn't there? Oh, uh, so many, so many, so many that we're so proud to serve. And we're happy to see getting healthy walking so long today. <laughs> yes, yes. And are you enjoying walking and marching in the St. Patrick's Day Parade? I am, I am. This has been, as a, as a uh, member of the board of directors for the parade, it's been really exciting for me to watch how it all comes together. All the work that goes in to make today happen is really remarkable. Sean Lane and Hillary crack the whip all the time. Uh, they, they do all the time. I'm very scared of both of them. <laughs> James, thank you very much. James Cahill from Blue Cross Blue Shield. We appreciate your time. Thank you and have a good St. March. Thank you. Happy St. Patrick's thank Day. You. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Who's that? And the Westchester County Firefighters Emerald Society is walking by there and uh, you know they have uh, Bandmaster Christian Versace, uh, Robbie Bodie, Chris Doyle, Tommy Johnson, Paddy McLean, Willie Sullivan, Patrick Haley, Kevin Doherty. They do a great job up there in Westchester County, Patrick Neville, Thomas Duffy. There's so many of them, but they've got such great music. Yeah. These bands are coming. They, pro they provide a wonderful soundtrack for the day. Yes, they do, and they were founded in May of 1973 under the direction of Lieutenant Martin J. Harding. What a great sound. Tommy, more cheers for you, my friend, from the EMS division of the FDNY. Well, they do a great job, too. I'm just hoping they don't need their service today. It's very important when but you do need it. And you're in good hands. They do a great I'll job of it. <laughs> Let me tell you. I mean, it's, it's a job that you have to appreciate. You do so much work, and there's so many people that uh, put their lives on the line in this city every day. To and a great opportunity to salute them. So often they're doing their job in the background. Today they're sort of showcased and... and to, much to be sure, get their uh, deserved due. Yeah, they certainly are. I just wonder how many firefighters are on the avenue today, because you didn't count them, did you, by any chance? No? Well, they see, carry the one. I mean, there must be uh, thousands at this point. Yeah. And of course, there's a church uh, of St. Agnes. They have an annual mass for the Feast of St. Patrick. It's in, in, uh, it's in Gaelic every year. It's a great day down on, in St. Agnes's church down there on 40. Third Street. That's right. Isn't it? it will be on. It's on every day. It's fantastic. The Mass is celebrated in English just for this year, they said. And it's in Gaelic every other year. Okay, we're looking at, uh, you know, the fires are part of EMS and uh, a couple of great e e M or e EMS, yeah, EMS uh, and EMTs, uh, Nicholas Villacci uh, and Kyle Cook. Yes, and Kira Lennon does a great job as an EMT in the New York also. And the band manager is Kevin Haw. The pipe manager is Michael Oist. And the pipe sergeant is Martin Miller. Brenda Breen is a nurse of Helen Nurse. And she's very happy that her son Shane is an ENT with the fire department EMS. Uh, she is so, so proud, Mommy. <laughs> uh, we are proud. And he's marching today. And his younger brother, Colin, you know, because he's just got called to join the U.S. Coast Guard. Oh that's well, a proud moment. That's a wonderful reminder, Tressa, that each face you're seeing has an entire story and connection to greater things, to be sure. Very good. How are you? 
nice to meet you. You too. Well, we can tell you that in Dublin today, the parade was uh, headed by the Irish soccer women's team who have qualified for the very first time for the World Cup Finals. Oh. New Zealand, later this year, in fact, 83,000 going to see them play against Australia. Oh, and guess what? Here in the booth, we have a little bit of company, don't we? Elizabeth Craven, from the CEO of CIE Tours, joins us. Elizabeth, happy St. Patrick's Day to happy you. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you. All right. No place I'd rather be than New York City on St. Patrick's Day. But Absolutely. Maybe, but maybe tomorrow I want to take a trip. What makes a CIE Tour so special? Well, CIE Tours has been operating in Ireland for 90 years. We celebrated our 90th anniversary last year. And we have been around for North American travelers to go take their vacation in Ireland for over nine decades. We also have the most options for anybody who wants to travel to Ireland. And many, many New Yorkers, many of the people at this parade have already traveled with CIE tours in the past. And we know that they would tell any of their friends and their neighbors that CIE Tours is the company to go with. You have a remarkably high uh, satisfaction uh, rate based on uh, many, many surveys. 95% uh, satisfaction, satisfaction rate. What do you think contributes to that? Well, it's the quality of the experience in Ireland. The destination of Ireland has become one of the world-class destinations, not only in Europe, but of the world. And Americans have a very special bond with Ireland, as we know, not only from the parade here today, but also with the number of Americans that have Irish heritage. It's an incredible amount of people, and many of them want to go, and they want to see this world-class destination. So we're here for that. It's a real inspiration, the parade is. Elizabeth, thank you so much. Have a great St. Patrick's Day. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Happy St. Patrick's Day, Elizabeth. Thank you. And we're looking at the Galway Association. Patrick Lally is the president. Done. Brian Kelly is first president. And uh, Agnes Delaney is there. And uh, we are delighted. We're on Galway here. Jennifer Lally, Catherine Hogan, Jerry McHugh, Paul Finnegan. Coming in. Sean yes. Kelly and, of course, Patrick Dunahoo. We couldn't forget him. Uh, we are delighted, of course, Sean Lane. I mean, he's definitely a Galway man. Tommy, Ta Galway Mike. Do Galway double this year. Okay, Mike, I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> and Margaret Brennan and Ashley John and Kelly Kieran is there. Watching. I see him. Oh. <laughs> Fiona Harris oh, is listening you. at home. Oh. Well, we're joined now by the president of Fordham University, Tanya Tetlow. How are you today? I am wonderful. Tell us who's marching. Oh, you've got the hat on. I know you've got some company. Got the hat on. I've got a whole group of alumni and students and our um, ROTC, and we're having a grand time. Why is this parade so important to Fordham? Well, in 1841, Archbishop Hughes founded Fordham for all the Irish Catholic immigrants coming off the boat who needed opportunity. And so it, this is really our heritage. And uh, just in terms of talking to the uh, students today, kind of how would you describe the energy marching in the parade? Oh, they are thrilled. There's just nothing like Fifth Avenue and St. Patrick's Day. Well, I have to say, uh, it's a legacy school for my family, my sister, cousin. So go Rams. Appreciate it. And a terrific day happy today. Thank you. Appreciate so it. Good enjoy, to be here. enjoy the rest of the march. Great. Thank you, and happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you. You too. Okay, we're still here on the avenue, and uh, we have the Ancient Order Hibernians, the first uh, battalion of Ancient Order Hibernians that we've seen on the parade today. And uh, of course, uh, they have been marching in the, the parade for years and years. And uh, this one is Orange County. This one is uh, upstate a bit. And uh, you know, there's a lot of great, uh, great people who are involved in the Ancient Order Hibernians. And for many years, uh, they kept this parade going, so we can thank them for having the parade. And uh, yes, and you can. And their motto is friendship, unity, and Christian charity. You're watching the 2023 New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade.
Baltimore Rook of Brittany. The banner on the front is Sean McDermott. He's a leader that was executed in Kilmain in Jane on May of 1916, Easter Rising. On the back of the banner, St. Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland and New York. Lovely Leachum has the beauty of Loch Allen on the Glens. The president is Margaret Taylor van Hooken, Sean McGovern and Frank Brady are there, Desmond McQueenie, Cathy Mitchell Maselli, Patrick yeah. Monsignor, Patrick Whitney, Donald O'Connell, Bernadette Dendlovey, Anne Henry, Noreen Regan, Pat Murray, Anna Mulvey Buggy. Yes, and Miss Erin, Vivian Butemer, is Uncle Sam is Patrick Flynn, the grandson of Easter Flynn, Seamus McGovern is there, Frank Brady, of course, there. Desmond McWheeney, Cathy, of course, is there, and Donald O'Connell. Trish Heslin. Oh, yeah, yeah Trish She's just shouting up at you. Never misses a parade. Well, someone David else is here. That would be Mark Phillips from Guinness. Mark, hello, how are you? Hi, how are you? Give Good us your afternoon. proper title and the name of the uh, parent corporation as well. Absolutely. But my name is Mark Phillips. I'm the head of Guinness here in North America. And so great to be here celebrating with you guys here today. Happy St. Patrick's Day. What's it like to be part of the event? You know, it's just incredible. I mean, New York is such a resilient city. People always show up in the biggest way possible. And we're just so excited to be back live this year with Guinness, just surging forward with such amazing optimism, just like our beer. Um, we're thrilled to be part of the day. I'm told you were pretty busy in Brooklyn yesterday. What was going we on there? We were very busy in Brooklyn working with a couple of uh, our partners, Joe Montana and Joe Burrow, for a very important cause, which was City Harvest and really getting food out to a lot of communities and a lot of families in need, which has uh, been a fantastic effort and something that Guinness has been uh, doing for many, many years, kind of giving back to their communities. This so we were thrilled to be able to do this it. This is a company with a lot of St. Patrick's Day experience. Do you have a, a tip or a suggestion for making it like the perfect St. Patrick's Day? Absolutely. You know, make sure that uh, you get a chance to try our new Guinness Zero, which is our non-elf product, and mm -hmm. use that over the course of the day. It's a great spacer as you're celebrating responsibly. Uh, very important. And honestly, just lean into the the revelry and celebration because it's an amazing uh, amazing day to be with fellow New Yorkers. That's beautifully put. Mark Phillips, thank you very much. Have a good March. Thank you very much. You Cheers. too. Happy Cheers. St. Patrick's Day. And Enjoy you. the rest of the March. And you. Thank, thank you. you. Up loud is right. Somebody just said it, but it's true that they're coming up behind us here somewhere loud, so we'd be delighted to see them for sure. And uh, of course, this year, Ireland made a lot of noise on the on the Oscars, I guess. They had an Irish film made history. It's the Quiet Girl was shortlisted. It's the first time a film in Irish has ever been nominated. Unfortunately, it didn't win, but nevertheless, it was fantastic mm -hmm. that it was there. And you, you know, before we were talking about birthdays, and every year I give a shout out to people celebrating their birthdays on St. Patrick's Day. And a few of my friends, Anne Hogan, Alexa Murray, and Bridie Fitzgerald, of course, listening at home. She's celebrating her 90th birthday, and that comes to her. I got a big text just now about it from her families and her daughter, Bridie Fitzgerald. Happy birthday, 90th birthday. And Shauna Munkin, she's a teacher. She is also marching today with Howtry Creek Middle School. They won't get on TV, but I'm giving her a shout out because it's their very first time marching in the parade. And Shauna is very, very proud of that. And she's a wonderful coach for Shannon Gates, football, hurling and camogie um, out there in Queens, New York. And she brought a team to Ireland and they won last year in the Fela. Yeah, an amazing situation here where the young Irish at least go home. Of course, the Irish dancers have been going to Ireland for many years and taking back all the big prizes. So, you know, there's a lot of talent in New York. I did a concert last week up in St. Barnabas. It was a concert in, in honor of uh, Father Brandon being Grand Marshal of the parade in Yonkers tomorrow. And there was 500 people at it. Because the, the talent that was on view from young kids was unbelievable. Oh, yes. Talk about talent, that's some pipe back. Let's give a listen. Stuff of County coming right beside us here now. They're just walking by there. Here they are. They're right there in front of us. Here they are, the 
Friendship Unity and Christian Charity, Aggie O'Leary, she is their aide to the Grand Marshal today. Their chaplain is Father Henry Reid and the president is Sue O'Neill and the vice president is Patricia Moynihan. And there's a, a, an amazing amount of women involved in it. The secretary is Carol Fancy, the treasurer is Madonna Nolte, the Irish historian is Patricia Pella and the missions and charities is Jenna Lambert. I'd like to give a shout out, if I may, to Bridget Carney. She is my president of the Ladies AOH <laughs> out in Whitestone, Division 15. And she's unable to walk today, but I, I'm thinking of you, and I know she's cheering us all on, Gus, here today. You can feel that spirit, for sure. Yes. And so much involvement in the community, so much volunteering throughout the year. And this is the one day, you know, you, you asked about the aides to the Grand Marshal, like, this, this is the one day they get recognized. So many to give so much, and this is the day that their organization picks them to actually march up Fifth Avenue. And today, the crowd, they looking back down to us. I think it's one of the biggest parades in a long, long time. Nation once again, why not? and all the Hibernians still coming behind us. And of course, there's good news here because I don't know, you probably know this, because you've been around New York a long time. A the New bit, York yeah. Titanic <laughs> Lighthouse is to be refurbished. It's located in the Seaport District. It's on the corner of Pearl Street and Fulton and was erected in 1913 to one of the 1496 who perished on the Titanic. Up until 76, it was famous for its green light, which could be seen 10 miles out to sea. The lighthouse was famous with uh, sea folk, and it, it's in a great spot down there, and I'm delighted they're going to Absolutely. do it back Absolutely, that's again. terrific. That's good to see that refurbishment going Yeah, on. it is. Centerburg High School. Coming on the scene. Centerburg High School, the Trojans Marching Band. Yes, there they are. And Ireland got the name The Emerald Isle from William Drennan, who included in his poem When Aaron's First Rose. That was in 1795, of course, Johnny Cash. He made a hit of it with 40 Shades of Green in 1961, Tommy. Yeah. Centerbury High School, a reminder of how much New York is a destination for so many people. These schools are uh, spread out across the country. That band from Ohio, this band, Atlanta High School from Alabama, I believe. There they are. And we have the U.S. Customs here behind us as well. From Montana, excuse me. Yes. Helen, from Helena, Montana. Oh, right, Montana. And the president is Kerry Gorman. There she is. They're over 40 years old, and they're going having a great time marching here in the parade. We'll be back with more of the 2023 New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade. Tell us about how she's feeling. How's it going today? Oh my, wow, it's been a really spectacular day so far. Everything that's, everything that's plenty. A loud coming. They got us. Let's see. I don't know.
You are watching the 2023 New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade. The Irish <laughs> Business yeah, Organization. That's right. It's celebrating 50 years today. The Irish Business Organization is a non-profit, non-denominational organization which seeks to promote, foster, and advance the business interests of Irish and Irish Amer American business people. Founded in 1973. The President Paul Finnegan, Business Development Irish Echo, and uh, First Vice President Sean O'Dowd. The second Vice President is Maura Clark, Treasurer is Marie Smith. The Chief Executive Officer is the Smith Affiliated Corporation. And uh, there's a lot of other people involved as well. There is Eileen Collins, Tammy McLaughlin, and Eileen Scully in the Marshal today is Nick Manto. And October the 24th, mark your calendar, folks, they're celebrating their 50th anniversary gala at Pier 60 in Manhattan. Let's check it now with our colleague, Rana Novini. She's down on Fifth Avenue. Rana? Hello, here I am. I, yes, I'm joined by Alison Metcalf with Tourism Ireland. Uh, we've been seeing so much of the Irish culture, dance, and music today, and I think a lot of people are thinking about that trip to Ireland. Tell us about some of the top destinations that they should see when they visit. Well, this is obviously the start of the tourism season, so we hope by you know, enjoying the island's you know, history and heritage and culture today here in New York that they'll be inspired to visit. So they should definitely, you know, they'll fly into Dublin probably. They should definitely spend some time um, in the city of Dublin, head north to, to Belfast along the Causeway Coast route, and of course, all Americans love to travel down the Wild Atlantic Way. And depending upon how much time they have, they move around the bottom and come up through Ireland's ancient east. So there's something for everybody, and we're so proud to be here in New York today. Um, this is a, a great celebration for us. It's a great opportunity for the diaspora to celebrate their heritage. So many Americans have Irish heritage, and that's a reason for traveling back to explore their roots. Um, and it's never been easier to get there. So we look forward to extending that big Cape Wheel of to American travel. This year. Yeah, we spoke to Aer Lingus earlier about some of their flight deals, but there really are a number of ways to get there. It's easy. Absolutely. There's lots of flight options, and from here in New York, there's, there's uh, all sorts of opportunities, there's all sorts of airfares and promotions out at the moment. So I would say to people, book early, um, not to, to avoid to not being disappointed. And for anybody else listening out there, we have routes from 15 gateways right across the U.S. So we're really thrilled with the, the way the flights have come back post-COVID. And this year, as we, we speak right now in Dublin, the parade is probably almost over. We've got our biggest ever parade in Dublin yeah. uh, and many parades and festivals celebrating Ireland's patron saint and what it's like on Christmas really. I mean um, for Ireland on March the 17th um, right around the Ireland Pride. You've been able to stand here and see some of this parade for what do you think? How does this compare to years past? Oh I think it's fantastic. I think it I think it uh, compares to um, um, the parade before COVID. Last year it was back. It was a wet day. Today the weather's beautiful. It's tremendous just to see all these marching bands and to see people having a good time spending time with friends and family, enjoying the best of Irish culture. And I hope once the parade's over, they'll, they'll enjoy some music elsewhere. Um, it's just fantastic. Um, I've never ceased to be amazed the, the power of people's interest in their Irish heritage, particularly here in New York City. It's fantastic. For us, uh, as a destination, uh, it couldn't, couldn't be any better. Right. Alison Metcalf of Tourism Island. We're hearing Sweet Caroline in the background. Hard not to smile and enjoy this day. We're going to send it back to you for now. Rana, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And that's the Riverdale High School band, local band, Oradell, New Jersey. Sweet Caroline. Caroline. Yeah, that tune always gets the party going. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if it's a traditional Irish tune, but it does get you uh, it does, going for sure. It does, raising <laughs> yeah, up yeah. them hands and that's singing big up, high. Big up in Boston, that's for sure. <laughs> it is. Well, there's Fordham University. They're just coming into our shot now. Ah, go Rams. Uh, you know, you change yourself, then you tackle the world. That's what they say. So many of them there. Uh, there I see uh, on Kathy Daw on the flag, on the American flag, she's celebrating the day. Probably celebrating a birthday with Joanne Curtin tomorrow in Yonkers. Fordham, of course, up there on Fordham Road in the Bronx. Yes, and Maeve McCarry is a proud student at Fordham University, and her parents, Joan and Philip, and her sisters, Orla and Owen, are supporting from the side there today. Great, great organization. Great, uh, great. It really place to is. Get an education. It I mean, really it's, is. it's been around for so long started down in Manhattan here and if, if you're a graduate of Fordham you can go anywhere in the world and you can get yourself a job. The original Fordham University can be traced to 1839 when John Hughes 
the Bishop of New York bought 100 acres of land up on Rose Hill, and all it cost him was 29,500. He got a bargain bus, didn't he? <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. And then the Archbishop welcomed the uh, Jesuits to the campus in 1846. And of course, they have a great uh, music uh, program there. Meet the they have. Kjol Nguyen, music of the Irish. There's, there we see County Derry, and the banner they were looking at, St. Colum Kill, an Irish saint who was banished to the island of Iona, just off Scotland. He wrote over 450 manuscripts and is famous for his prophecies. The back of the banner is John Mitchell. He was born in Dungiven, County Derry, and he was involved with the nation also with the 1848 rising over the famine. Well, there must be, it must be a very, very rich county because there's an awful lot of diamonds in it. In fact, Joe Diamond is uh, actually the president of the Derry organization at the moment. And uh, they have a huge crowd coming. And there's a few counties coming there. One that might interest me is coming very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder who it is. The wee county of Loud is coming very close. <laughs> it is. But it's not here yet. No, it's not here yet. Well, there's Dan and Margaret. Neither is Christmas. Dan and Margaret Sheen marching with their daughter Nora and their granddaughter Joan today. Look at them. Joe Doherty's out there up front. He's the man that's doing all the waving. <laughs> oh, yeah, loud's coming. I can see them in the sights. I can see them in the sights. Yeah. Hello, Joe. That's the West Point Pipes and Drugs, USMA, West Point, New York. Oh, I wonder where that county is. County oh, Loud. look at that. County Loud, the wee county in the Big Apple. And the front of the banner, St. Bridget, the female patron saint of Ireland. February the 1st is her feast day. She will be celebrated now, and she was in the first Monday in February. And it's her bank holiday officially from now on. In the back of the banner is the Celtic Cross of Monash Device, ancient ruins at Melfont Abbey, and the Round Tower. And, uh, you know, the president is Steve Murphy, the vice president is Chris Thompson, he's there with his wife, the recording secretary, Kevin Garvey, Jennifer Neal, John Thompson, Peggy Cudden, and there's a lot of the Karens there, uh, Rita, Michael, Mary Glynn, Anne Thomas, and John Karen. And, uh, you know, we had a great time this year. It's great to see uh, young Garvey man out there. We went to his wedding out in uh, Long Island, and it was a fantastic day. He married Abby, and he has her walking up Fifth Avenue today for the very first time. <laughs> but she's also walking up as a loud person today because she's supporting loud. And it's great to see all the loud folks out there with their top hats and all on, all on front of it. And uh, you know, that's the wee county. And it is indeed. We have a contingent out from Ireland. We have a lot of people marching there. It's good to see they've done, done a good job of getting them back up together again. And uh, Steve Murphy over there. I know the Garveys are all watching at home. Kevin Rogers there, Paul Levins. Yeah, there's loud men everywhere. <laughs> and I, they know who you are, sir. I see Chris Thompson coming up here along. And I'm not sure, but Neve, <laughs> Neve Riley is marching and there too. And there's Cathy McGuire. Cathy McGuire, they're all marching it. You know, Paul Levins. And Neve Riley is the sixth generation, Tommy, of your family marching today. Look at her. Yeah, she's marching today. And people say, but just a six family, six generations, not much, but every one of them have been born in Ireland. That's quite a quite a, a feat to get them all together. And there we see County Kilkenny Society in the banner. Is front, on the front of it is James Stevens, the Fenian chief. And the back is Ignatius Rice, the founder of the Irish Christian Brothers. And Kilkenny, Kilkenny is called after St. Kenneth. Kilkenny Town sits on the banks of the River Nore. The president is Martin Murphy from Callan. It was a great hurler. His daughter, Katrina Murphy, is a doctor of education here in New York City. And I see, on the, who do I see there? On the, I see Pat Walsh, anyhow, and John Power. And uh, Kenny, a great hurling town, of course. Of course, and Brendan Murphy is there. He's a lieutenant with the fire department. He's on the ropes. And um, Anna Mags Reiner there, and Mary McAvoy. Anita Dermody is there. For Manor. For Manor. There it is. The, on the banner is St. Patrick, and on the back, oh, there's the tower on Devonish Island, on the back of the Nullick. banner, founded in 1903, and Nulla Cleary, she is, she's president now, Tommy, for 20 years, keeping yeah. it going. And she's getting a lot of help today from Fergus Boak, 
uh, Maria Gormley, Jean Mulligan, Kathleen Flanagan. I don't know where the names are coming from here, but there's <laughs> Michael Murray, and Pat McNulty, Martin Connolly and James Connolly. And then carrying the banners is Damien and Kieran Boyle, the flag carriers are James Cassidy on the United States flag, and Jean Mulligan is on the Irish flag. Uh, oh my goodness, those counties are flying up here, Gus. <laughs> Then we go to the, we're going into the middle of Ireland now. We're going to County Offaly. Yeah, Offaly got his nickname when the GA set up. They said that County Offaly was faithful to the GA traditions, both hurling and football. There's the banner, the round tower of Clan McNice and the high crosses. Clan McNice earned for Ireland the title of Island of Saints and Scholars. The back of the banner is St. Kieran, and he's the last High King of Ireland, Roy O'Connor. Uh, he was buried in 1198. Paddy Hogan is leading them. He's the man who puts them all together. We also see that uh, Dennis Nolan is there, Peter Kilmartin, uh, Martin Furlong, Peter Nolan again. There's two Peter Nolans, Mike Deegan and uh, John Larkin. John Larkin, a uh, very successful construction man in this town. And awfully are a great, in the middle of the country, they were great for football, they were great for uh, hurling, they were great for everything. Let me tell you, there's tough lads come from awfully. There is, and Dolores Kelly, I know you're watching. I know you're working today, and hello, Dolores. And hope you're enjoying our show. No shortage of good schools around the Tri-State area, and that certainly includes St. John's University, which is now making its way up to the viewing stand here on Fifth Avenue. Yeah, blending suburban tranquility with urban excitement. The nearly 102-acre campus in this location in the residential area of Queens, New York. And the Reverend Brian J. Shanley is the president of St. John's. The Johnnies are here in force today. Yeah. St. John's University is a four-year private non-for-profit school located in Queens. <laughs> <laughs> They're certainly made their, making their presence felt here, aren't they, Gus? Uh, absolutely. They, you, you almost sense the, the energy and enthusiasm only builds as we uh, move along here on the route. Yeah, and you'd imagine as the day goes by that it would uh, be starting to, you know, slip down a little bit, but it's not. No, th this year it really does seem like there are more people than we've had in a long time. Oh, yeah. I'm sure the weather uh, contributes to that, but just the, the, the attitude for sure. The Maritime College uh, re represented. Oh, yeah. They were founded in 1874, and Maritime College has attracted broad recognition as leaders in higher education. Yeah, the oldest and largest maritime school in the country, Maritime College, is located in the historic Fort Schuyler, Bronx, New York, just minutes away from New York City. Beautiful. Michael uh, Alafontes is uh, the president of the college, and uh, the graduates enjoy more than 90% career placement rate. Belfast is a city that is Gary Lightbody from Snow Patrol and one of our Belfast music ambassadors. He said that music is in the DNA of Belfast and that resonates with me. I think that's true. People in Belfast love music. It's everywhere of all genres and I think it really adds something to our citizens' lives, to the city and offers something unique for visitors to come and hear. I think that's probably why we got the UNESCO status, that and the sheer number of festivals that we have. You can find every type of music in Belfast, from expert musicians, from punk to traditional music, to opera, to jazz, to hip hop, to rock, everything is here. Jazz is a uniquely American music, but it's spread worldwide, and as Europeans, we have our own take on it. I think jazz is important because it's the last form of improvised music that's left. There's so many kinds of music, you know, play it from the page or play it from memory. Jazz is a uniquely improvised music and it brings something different to the table. Everybody here at the club sees musicians at the top of their game telling their soul and telling their story. Belfast has a unique place in the story of punk. There's a great film that was made about it that encapsulates the late 1970s, Good Vibrations. 
And in it, Terry Hooley quotes, he says, New York has the haircuts, London has the trousers, but Belfast has the reason. It was something that brought the young people together. They could forget what part of the city they came from or what community, and they were just there together to enjoy the music and dance like crazy. That was really the start of coming together. Music can be a great unifier, and as well as entertaining people, it can play a part in shaping history. Belfast, the UNESCO City of Music, and here in Manhattan, the City of Music as well today. There's Dover, our Hoover High School band from Hoover, Alabama. Yes, family, dedication and determination, sacrifice. They're the guiding principles of the Hoover High School bands. Richard Fitzpatrick is a director, and uh, we also have uh, Sally Vines, John Foden, another good Irishman, Adrian uh, Fitzpatrick. The two marching bands, actually, and the size of this one is incredible. It's very impressive. You know, and anyone with a kid who's in a high school band will appreciate the amount of time that it takes to rehearse all those early mornings, often before school even starts, and all those hours leading up to a few moments here. It's a, it's a lot of work, a lot of commitment, and it really does pay off on St. It Patrick's sure Day. is. It, it certainly does, and I hope they're enjoying it. <laughs> there's there's Berlin just shouting up at us here. <laughs> I sometimes feel bad. those uniforms don't look very warm when we have a very cold march. <laughs> yes. Today, it's okay, but what you are, what it, it's... <laughs> That's the James Connolly group there. Yes, and the Binlin's mother, Bridget, who hails from Killala in County Mayo, she's 91 years old today and cheering them on from our home today. Happy birthday, Bridget. And Billy Lane, of course, is the business director. Yeah, it's a, it's a great organization. Of course, James Connolly and Larkin founded the Irish Labour Party, and he spent a lot of time in New York. In fact, he lived in New York from 1903 to 1910. Uh, he was probably he was shot in a wheelchair after the Easter Rising. That was mm. how they uh, took the death sentence on him. The Breezy Point Catholic Club pipes and drums. A strong Irish community out in Breezy Point for sure, Queens. Oh yeah, they lovely, lovely place out there, Breezy Point. And St. Francis College, Brooklyn. Breezy Pine, founded in 2001 by the late Terence Williams and James Adams. The band hails from, as you said, Breezy Pine. The yeah, band kilt is the New York City tartan with blue and for the water and green for the parks. Yeah, and the organization prides itself on Celtic heritage and travels across to Scotland to perform at the Pipe Fest in 2005 in Hollywood. Mood Park. The pipe major is Michael Wallace, the pipe sergeant is Brittany Dombrowski, and the drum sergeant is Laurie Wasson Jack. McCarthy's all today, and Kenny Burke and Teresa Highland. I must say, the bagpipes, I love the bagpipes, and I think I might have told this story again, but however, here it goes again. When I was a child, Gus, we lived up at the top of a hill at the back of Cove. Island in Cork, and uh, our ba uh, no gentleman used to get out dealing pipes and the bagpipes, and they used to play them. And the other man, at living his friend right across the other side of the island, would get out his bagpipes, and for an hour you'd hear the two of them trying to tune and sync, and then they would play the bank pipes. And on a summer's evening, I would sit out making daisy chains and listening to the bagpipes. What a wonderful memory! I love the bagpipes. Would you fancy yourself to play the bagpipes, uh, Gus? How much time does it take to learn to play those? Do you think, um, <laughs> I think it's a, a lifetime journey. A lifetime. <laughs> okay. And I'm, I'm not sure to get appreciated enough after the lifetime is over. But I think if you wanted to play the bagpipes, you could. You could just practice, practice, practice. Practice, practice, practice. That's what they all say. That's how you get the Carnegie Hall, I guess it's how you get to play the bagpipes. Practice, well. practice, practice. You want to be good at something, you have to practice, practice, practice. Well, that group is in Carnegie Hall tonight, the Cross Border Orchestra, and we, we wish them well. We hope that they, they sell it out. They're a great organization. They started out just to encourage kids from the border areas to play, and now they have 45,000 kids in it. Here we have the correction department. What a band they have. Yes, keeping the tradition alive since 1955. There they are. The piper is Daniel Silvernay. They're wearing uniform, member class A uniforms, summer blouses and white gloves. 
dress code is not negotiable. Roger Slattery took over as drum sergeant and Tom Hayes remains as the drum major. Bob Hanley retired after 28 years of service. That's really putting in a lot of service. You put in 28 years of service <laughs> with any organization you've done well, Gus. The president is Timothy C Cohen, Keith Les is the first vice president, and Brian Shark is the treasurer, and Kathleen McMahon is the secretary. Here they are. I see Kathleen Mulvey, Michael Horahan, Richard Palmer, and Robert Ellis. Officers having a good time as they make their way up Fifth Avenue. They certainly are on the trace. The band trace is beginning to be dream of a few New York City Correction Department members and friends to express their common Celtic heritage. At the same time, they represent the agency. If you're which a baseball those fan, members proudly serve. Here's Steve Garvey right behind you. There oh, he is, right there. Steve Garvey wants to hit one out of the park. You see him right here. He's coming behind the pipers in the front right. line with the sash. What a great, what a great baseball player he was. I was going to say football player, there. but he's unbelievable. He's going to Ireland, they're going to start a, a baseball team in Ireland. But should, they should know that baseball did start in Ireland anyhow. What's the difference? That's what the nuns in Torlis say. It's probably like rounders, and they started it, they say. There's no Dodger fans here anyway. <laughs> Christian Brothers. Tanya Gale, New York. They're coming right behind us here and uh, been an organization that's been around for many, many years and has provided uh, great assistance to various things in Ireland. That's Bobby Sands, of course. Bobby Sands, one of the hunger strikers who died in active service on the 5th of May, 1981. And Seamus Woods is coming here on... He was from Pomeroy in County Tyrone. Still remembered. There's Danny Brown, the chairman of the New York Minor Board. He does a fantastic okay. job. <laughs> And there he is, Vice Chairman of the Shannon Gales Club in Queens. And lots of, of course, there's lots of Gaelic hurling and football clubs around New York and Connecticut. Lots if you want to play. You don't have to be living in Queens. You can live in the Bronx, of course, it's very popular. The Celtics are in. It, it's really grown in popularity the last couple of years. Yes, more it, people following, yeah. it really has. And Gaelic Park up at 240th Street in the Bronx. Lots of clubs, St. Sebastian's, the Celtics Club. Cairo Durham High School out of Cairo, New York. So many of these great uh, high schools have such wonderful bands. I mean, and the colleges have such wonderful bands. And a range of music, too, from the traditional to some pop hits. All yeah. out you know something? Either my hearing is gone or something is wrong. I don't think I've heard any boy today at all. <laughs> Universal. Any of our colleagues there marching with us today? Yes, honoring the name of Patrick and Ireland. 
out at NBC, the first open league gay group to march the parade a couple of years ago. That's right. Colleagues, right now, Renan Amini. She's down on Fifth Avenue, and we turn to her now. Renan? Yes, Gus, I'm joined by Dr. Jennifer Lancaster with St. Francis College. Uh, St. Francis College has been part of this parade for so many years. Tell me about the history and the importance of being part of this parade. It's so exciting for us to be able to participate here today. St. Francis College started at St. Francis Academy in 1859 when uh, our brothers, Franciscan brothers, came from County Galway in Ireland and started the St. Francis Academy. And we've been going strong ever since, 160 plus years. Yeah. Who do you have marching here today? Oh, we have a whole bunch of folks, current students, alumni, folks from our advancement office, and anybody who wants to be a part of it is really excited to be here today. Yeah. You were just telling me that you haven't been part of a parade in a number of years. How does it feel? What do you think being back? It is so exciting. You know, I left uh, our brand new campus this morning to come and join the parade, um, and I couldn't be more excited to be here. Yeah, tell us a little bit about the campus. What's going on? What's new this year? Oh, it's so great. We just moved into a brand new state-of-the-art campus in Brooklyn. We have brand new labs, state-of-the-art technology in our classrooms, and we've centered everything around the student experience so students really get to enjoy everything that our campus has to offer. Yeah, and given the history started by two Irish brothers, uh, I assume it's a special place for people with Irish heritage as well. A lot of people here part of this parade. Definitely. We are uh, open and welcoming to folks from all walks of life and students from all around the globe but of course we have a special place in our heart for our Irish students and alumni. Great. Dr. Lancaster thank you so much for being with thank us. Happy so St. Patrick's Happy Day. St. Patrick's we appreciate Day. it. Thank you. We'll send it back to you. Okay Randa thanks very much. Well we continue along uh, Fifth Avenue here and uh, Scott Presbyterian and his wife Teresa they do a fantastic job there. Scott is in the office all the time and anytime there's a fire to be put out Scott will put it out and uh, you know Sean Lane and uh, Hillary Bourne and Riley Done, done. They all do a great job, and as I said, Gus, it is all volunteers. Except and as you see the people on the side with clipboards as well, there's also a contest going on here. Every group and every band has been judged, and depending on what kind of a mark you get, you will move, either move up in the parade or maybe move down in the parade. Oh. I didn't say that too loudly. I don't think anybody <laughs> heard it. But you definitely move up in it. <laughs> More of the New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade coming up.
And we're taking a look along the march here from St. Patrick's Day Parade. And right now, taking a look at Iona University. They have a great tradition with the parade for many years. Uh, the lead backpiper for years is oh, a yeah. legacy family over at Iona. And so is this year's uh, lead piper. Up in uh, New Rochelle, they're a great, great campus in New Rochelle. And uh, they have turned out so many great uh, people in the, in the world today. You can find a lot of them come from Iona, it was founded in 1966 by brother Charles Quinn. That was the band. He was the moderator of the Gaelic Society. And Jack Dooley, the Iona College Pipe Band, is managed and directed and comprises of current students. Yes, and Iona University is named after a small island off the west coast of Scotland where St. Columba founded an abbey in 563, as did the monks of St. Columba's time. Iona's founders be believed in the power of education to move the world. And of course, he, he was banned from Ireland uh, and he was told never to walk on Irish side, but he was so homesick. What he did was he filled his shoes full of Irish clay, or filled his shoes full of Iona clay, uh -huh. and he walked on the Iona, Iona clay, but he went back to Ireland. Iona opened the stores in 1940 with nine Christian brothers and six lay facilities. The goal was to open a new path to economic and social advancement for the sons and daughters of New York's working class. And Iona's university's Liam Gear, it's only 21, has been named as one of the nation's Irish Top 40 Under 40 Award winners by the Irish Echo. Widely celebrated as the director of the Iona University Pipe Band, Gear was chosen for his dedication, innovation and achievements as an up and coming leader of Irish America. Liam Gear, director of the music. Yeah, the Irish war pipes, earliest origin dates back to 4000 BC. I just want to give a shout out to Detective Lieutenant Michael Crowley who went by there with the Suffolk uh, County Police. He was the man of the year this year, so congratulations to Detective Mike Crowley. Beautiful contingent oh, of my own. The Gales. Oh, there they are. Nice crew. <laughs> the Gaelic They're Society. The real Gales. Yeah. That is a student run organization to promote Irish heritage and culture throughout Iona College. And it went away for a while and they brought it back again in 2015. Very up excited. in New Rochelle. Very excited to see you, Tressa, clearly. Yeah. They are, they are feeling good. Hello. Oh my goodness, they're waving mad to us. They have 50,000 gales around the world. Whether you graduated last week or last century, they invite you to stay connected to all things Iona. And the Council of the Gaelic Society is coming up here on us as well. I mean, they're associated not with Iona, but you know, when you go back and you look at it, Mary Holt Moore was the former Grand Marshal in 91. She was the second woman to be honored as a Grand Marshal, Dorothy Hayden was the first and uh, Mary's son now is the president, Dr. Frank Holt. And uh, this is the organization that, well, they've marched for a long time, but they're very responsible for keeping the Gaelic language alive. Yeah, they've been marching in this parade for over 112 years. And this is an example of the traditional Irish dancing that we'll see along the march today. Yeah, we, that's, that's the second group we've seen of it now, so uh, this is very good. Uh, the parents and students, Irish dance and music, and uh, there's a, a lot of people in there to keep this together. Yeah, there, there certainly is Eileen Daly's, uh, my goodness, Erin uh, Daly, McGovern, she's the parade chair lady today, and Mary Fee, the president of the association, and the dancers, Alana Callan from Queens, New York. She will be heading to Dublin next month for her first World Championship competition. And of course, Neve O'Hara is not only working towards qualifying for the Worlds in 2024, but also a member of, of course, Shannon Gales GA, where she plays football and camogie. And she recently competed in 2023 score for solar and figure dancing. And her mom, Jennifer, just learned how to play the flute, my goodness. Rana Davini standing by along Fifth Avenue with what I'm told is a very important person, Rana. Yes, thank you, Gus. I'm joined by Sean Lane, the chairman of the board of the parade. We saw you a little bit earlier at St. Patrick's Cathedral. Yes. I'm wondering now, seeing the parade for a couple of hours now, what do you think, how has it been going for you? 
Oh, Rana, it's obviously been a spectacular parade. This is the warmest weather we've had, I believe, in seven or eight years. Since Cardinal Dolan was Grand Marshal, suspiciously, we had very fine weather, but uh, this is actually spectacular. It's really a great day. It's wonderful. And earlier, we spoke a little bit about the theme of the parade, yes. which is fighting hunger. Talk to me about the awareness you're bringing to the issue, but also the work you're doing to combat it. Well, food insecurity means a very big deal uh, to the Irish people. As I'm sure you've heard, it's something indelibly embedded within the Irish psyche. In 1847, we had the Great Famine in Ireland, and when, within a short four to five years, Ireland had lost 12% of its population, had actually starved to death, and another 12% had immigrated. So the population of Ireland, which was 8 million in 1845, decreased every single year until 1962. So it was truly amazing. It, you know, it also started this wave of immigration. But on the other hand, that's why St. Patrick's Day is celebrated by 95% of countries all over the world, because we went everywhere. When we left, we took off to the four quarters of the world, but New York, obviously, is, it was a hotbed for the Irish, and thank God for that. That's why we have this glorious parade today. Yeah, and the parade has done a lot of work to help the organizations that are on the front lines in combating food insecurity. You're absolutely right. I mean, we're working with City Harvest, City Meals on Wheels, and uh, Catholic Charities this year. And it is, it's heartbreaking. It's funny, fun, not funny, but weird, strange coincidence. The night we were going to introduce the Grand Marshal, announce the Grand Marshal's choice at the Irish Consulate, I happened to pass a soup kitchen, and there was a child of no more than six or seven years old, patiently sitting on his school bag, reading a book, waiting to be fed. That's a Heart true break. story. That's five o'clock. That was just off of Park Avenue. I could not believe it was just, I just sat there and watched for a minute. I was like, oh my God, these people are, you know, and the little boy is just very patiently reading his book. It affects so many families in the shadows. And, you know, it's something that you might see daily, but you may not see it too. And it, it, it's out there. Well, it's somewhere in the region of 10% of New Yorkers. We have 19 million people in New York. And I believe it's somewhere in the region of 2 million people are food insecure. And something in the region of 25% of children, which is heartbreaking. It's really heartbreaking. That, uh, but as I said, this is something that we really believe. We, I think we raised over a million dollars in our gala the other night. We have to tally it up, and we haven't gotten the bill from the hotel yet, but somewhere north of that. And our Grand Marshal, Kevin Conway, has been magnificent. He truly has. He's been magnificent. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate you know the work that you do, and also congratulations on a beautiful parade today. I mean, the, the weather is beautiful, as you were saying, and I think we have as many spectators here than I've ever seen. And Rana, thank you for your support. You got the green coat. You got your shamrocks, you got the parade pin. Thank you. Doing so my much. best. Banner clean the fail of Porter Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you so much. We'll send it back to you. Rana, thank you very much. It's an important perspective there. That cheering you hear coming from the group from Manhattan College. Well, it was founded in 1853 by the Dallas Christian Brothers. Uh, Catholic religion teaching all that started by St. John Baptist de La Salle. The college moved to Riverdale in the Bronx, where it still is in 1923, and we have approached 100 years. They're approaching 100 years in it. Yeah, the colors are green and white, and the Gaelic Society was founded in 1939. Members of the Gaelic Society have marched in the St. Patrick's Day Parade every year since the Society's founding, making Manhattan College participation parade longer than any other college. Of course, the nickname the Jaspers, Brother Gardner does a great job up there. Uh, this Manhattan College, you know, people ask me, where did you go to college? I say Manhattan College. I cheated a little bit. I went to Gaelic Park. That's where I learned the broadcast. <laughs> but Manhattan College is up on the hill. And as you say, if you were around for a hundred years and you've given the education to as many people as they have in that Riverdale campus in particular, well, then you've done a fantastic job. This is the 2023 New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade.
You're watching the New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade. Ryan Amini joining us down with another guest. Yes, I'm joined by Hillary Byrne, the founding chairman of the New York City St. Patrick's Day Foundation. Thank you again for being here with us. Uh, you brought your son Connor once again. We were just saying that we've seen Connor grow up here at this parade. Uh, and this is really run by families, right? Generations of families and volunteers that have helped put this parade together. Yeah. Uh, given a parade that's 262 years old, multi-generations have come out every year to help uh, volunteer to get this parade operational every year and needless to say this year they've done a spectacular job they really have like the crowds is amazing so it is tell us about a little bit about what's different this year what's new this year what's on the top of your mind well we have groups from all over the country groups from Canada Ireland the United Kingdom and this year we recognize the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement and we also are making awareness of food insecurity even in, in our own backyard here in New York by raising funds to help support the, uh, the needy here in New York we were just speaking with Sean Lane about the issue of food insecurity and how much money this parade uh, has helped raise and helping these charities it's just incredible it, it is incredible absolutely yeah and uh, the other night we had a gala event and it was really really well attended uh, it honored the grand marshal but also he got a lot of his friends to help support food insecurity by making donations to the foundation uh, and then we will then send it on to city harvest catholic charities so they will i think catholic charities fed somewhere in the region of 10 million people during the pandemic and that's just an enormous number and they need all the support that they can get yeah, and we need to remember that the issue of food insecurity of hunger did not go away when the pandemic ended it continues it continued with inflation um, t tonight like needless to say when you say continues uh, tonight we will be recognizing the 25th anniversary of the good friday agreement in carnegie hall where the cross-border orchestra who marched earlier today will be performing and that's significant because you have groups of children who have grown up for the last 25 years performing that orchestra from both sides of the border in Ireland. And, and it's going to be a spectacular continuation of today's events. That's wonderful. Hillary Byrne, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you and to Connor as well. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. We'll send it back to you. Okay, Rana, thanks very much. And there we have County Dublin Society of New York, founded in 1937. There's the banner on the front of the banner was three castles, three leaping flames of wisdom. The three castles represent the three fortified gates to the ancient walled city of Dublin, founded in 1988. And the back of the banner, the name Dublin, comes from the Gaelic on Duvling, meaning the Black Pool. Well, that's me, the, you know, the... The county that's very close to me at home, they're in fact they're our next door neighbours and uh, Donald Clare is out there in front, Aidan Burke is the Vice President, Mary McCauley is the Treasurer, Bridget Riley, Armento is the Secretary, Monica McCann and uh, Jackie McGuire, Chief Executive of the County Board is out. And the banner was the front we saw there was Father O'Groney from Athby who wrote the first textbook for teaching the Irish language. Leash. There is County Leash. Yeah, indeed, uh, they have a good contingent out there. And, uh, you know, when you look at Leash and you say to yourself, oh, they've done a fantastic job over the years. I mean, they're one of the uh, counties in the middle of Ireland. And uh, their president is Mike Dunphy. Julie McAvoy is the Grand Marshal. And, uh, you know, the banner was held Mike, Mike Brandon, Hugh McAvoy, and Kevin Dunphy is on the banner. Yeah, and the James Finton Lala, we saw the Patriot was on one side of the banner there in St. Finton. Leash is patron saint was on the other side. You're watching the 2023 New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade.
You're watching the New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade and the counties keep on coming. Well, Kevin celebrated the 175th anniversary on Uncle Banner. Yes, the, the front is Miles Slasher O'Reilly on his way to the Battle of Bilborough in 1600. Well, there they are. And the back is St. Patrick, Cavan, a landlocked county which has a lake for every day of the year. The President, Michael O'Reilly, recording secretary is Mary Harron, a great marathoner. Father Martin O'Reilly is the chaplain and vice president is Paul Smith. The financial secretary is Bridget McGuire. Treasurer is Michael McGovern. And the PRO is Murray Tully, trustee PJ Smith, Oliver Doolan. Mike Martin just going by there and uh, there's a, an amazing amount of people. Kevin always gets so many people out onto it. Another big Smith player coming along here as well. Yes. Say same to you. <laughs> and Pat Rudden has taken over. Excuse me, Tommy. Pat Rudden has taken over from Jimmy McGear this year. Yeah, he's the man who's going to keep them solid at the back. Jimmy had that job for about 30 years. I saw PJ and Kit Smith there as well. So they're well supported. The cabin folks get out in style and uh, they look well. They're having the 175th dinner dance when it is coming up very shortly in March 25th at 7 p.m. at Leonard's. And uh, they will have uh, Tony Clark as the Distinguished Service Award, and they're going to honour Kathleen O'Reilly on Saturday, March 25th. And marching with Kevin is the United Irish United Nations Veterans Association Post 17. Uh, 15, pardon me, in Cavan, and um, it's founded in 1991 in Cavan Town. 100 members of both serving and retired members of the Defence Forces and the Garda Shia Corner. Each member has served with the UN at one stage in a peacekeeping tour of duty. And once again, we're going to check in with our colleague, Rana Novini. She's standing by along Fifth Avenue with another guest. Hi, yes. Thank you. I'm joined by Brother Daniel Gardner, the president of Manhattan College. Manhattan College has such a history with this parade. Tell us a little bit about that. We do. Well, we're a 170-year-old institution, full of spirit and life, and a lot of foundations with our Gaelic roots. Gaelic Society since 1939 been in the parade, one of the longest organizations marching in this parade. Yeah. So we're really proud to be part of it. I think the longest running college in yeah, the absolutely. parade. Absolutely, the longest running college and just really proud of our Gaelic roots, especially on this beautiful day today. Yeah, in, in that vein, why is it important for you to be part of this parade? Well, I think it just allows us to understand how important our roots are, our Gaelic roots, our Irish roots and heritage, but it's also, we're celebrating a lot of anniversaries 170 years as an institution, 100 years in the Bronx, 50 years of co-educational education. Uh, there's just so much going on at Manhattan College. We're so excited, and we're, we love to be very positive part of this great event. Yeah, campus is in Riverdale, correct? Tell us a little bit about the campus, what people can expect. Well, we have 23 acres. We're in the Riverdale section of the Bronx. Uh, we have about 3,000 students, uh, a, a whole variety of different majors. Uh, from engineering to the liberal arts, uh, beautiful rustic campus in the city. Manhattan's got it all. You, we were talking earlier that you've been, you've marched in many a parade here through every sort of weather. What do you make of today? Well, today is fantastic. You never know if it's going to snow, if it's going to rain or sleep, but today is just a perfect mix of sunshine, clear skies, and a lot of great spirit. It's truly amazing. Thank you so much, President. Thank you so much for having me today. Thank you. We appreciate you being here Thank from Manhattan you. College. Thank you so much. We'll send it back to you. Absolutely. Fantastic forecast, as he says. Rana, thank you very much. You're watching the 2023 New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade. We'll be back right after this.